Hello everyone, welcome back to the beginning. A few weeks ago I made a compilation of episodes 1 through 10 and you guys loved it. So we now have a compilation of the episodes 10 through 20 or like 11, you know what I mean? <laughs> I went ahead and cut out all of the rambles of the intro, all the rambles of the outro, so this is like a really easy way for you to just binge watch the questy portion of Back to the Beginning. Back to the Beginning has been going on for almost four years, which is crazy. So I feel like a lot of people might find it overwhelming to begin watching the episodes as they come out every Saturday. So I thought maybe a compilation would make it a little bit more man manageable and maybe more people can come to find the love of Back to the Beginning. It's also absolutely crazy to see me from 2020 or 2021 because I just, I feel like I sound different. I am different. And also guys, the old characters. I did just download these off of YouTube, so hopefully the quality is still okay. You can, however, go and watch the Back to the Beginning playlist, which has all of the videos in their entire glory. All of the rambles, if that is something that you are interested in. Let's get into it. Oh, we also have two more intros. Like, let me know if you guys remember my intros. There's two new ones that well, not new ones, but old ones, but I changed my outro twice throughout the next 10 episodes. Hello everyone, welcome back to the beginning for episode 11 of this Let's Play, and um, I think it's episode 11, I'm not quite sure. But um, today we're going to be checking out more of the story quests as per usual. And we're going to be looking for clues here with Alex in Silverglade Manor. And at the end, we might actually continue some um, quests to get us all the way into Jorvik Stables because that's where the open house is for the next week and a half now. And um, I kind of want to go and visit it and get all the XP from there. So, um, let's just start off with Alex's quest. Look, before we go to Virgrove to do any more research on this John Sandman, we should try to find out where Linda is. Maybe we can find some clues if we look around here. Now, Alex, finding our friend is a pretty good idea to me. The floating paper finally has some use. We also found a, um, oh, a pair of glasses and a phone. This must all be Linda's stuff. This is so strange, exactly. If Linda left of her own free will, she would hardly have left her glasses and mobile phone behind. And what do you have there? A page from a book? Oh look, it's from Peter Pan. Wait, that's Linda's favorite book. I managed to get the phone turned on. Let's check the messages. Okay, the latest one says, meet me, meet me behind the stable tonight at 7 p.m. and you will find out the truth, come alone. Wasn't it behind the stable that you found Linda's belongings? There's no sender info, but we could try calling the number, sorry if you have my phone, and see who picks up. Will you do it? The phone is on the table next to you. Okay, Alex, fine then, let me use the phone, that's fine. Yes, this is Godfrey, the butler speaking. Who am I talking to? Hello? Hello? Godfrey! Oh, that's the tea! So much tea. Was that Godfrey? Well, he obviously has something to do with this. Strange. We should go talk to him. Maybe this is all just a misunderstanding. I sure hope it is. Godfrey! I mean, come on. He's a butler. You know, kind of, kind of expect something suspicious, right? Miss, what is it? I'm in a hurry, if you don't mind. I need to... What? You called me from Linda's phone? Must be a misunderstanding. I really can't stay in chat, you see. I really can't. Goodbye, miss. Oh, and he's going away. He left without answering your questions. This is getting stranger and stranger. You think Linda's stuff in the book page may be the start of a trail? Hey, it may well be. You're clever, Cassandra. Maybe the trail will lead us to Linda. You should follow it. And now we're following a trail to rescue Linda. Some more book pages. Oh, maybe they're all book pages? All right, and we have followed the trail of books to the castle. How suspicious. So now we have to ride back to Silverglade Manor, I guess, to uh, tell the news to Alex. I see. The trail ends at the castle. Is that where she is then? In the castle? It makes no sense at all, if you ask me. What? Yeah, that's right. There have been rumors about a girl crying in the tower, but could that actually be, you know, her? You know what? I need to run some errands, but 
Here's a really good voice recorder. Why don't you go to the castle and wait until the crying starts and try to get it on tape. Then we can listen to it together and try to find out whose voice it is. That is a good idea, Alex. Now we're going to sit out here and wait for the crying to start. I can't hear anything. My horse is having a fun time though. I mean, I didn't hear anything, but... Maybe my sound just wasn't on high enough. Did you hear anything? Did you get it on tape? Let me hear. That's Linda's voice. Yes, I'm sure of it. Godfrey must be keeping her locked in the castle for some reason. You need to tell the Baroness about this. She has to let us into the castle. The Baroness is out in the vineyard. Vineyard. Sorry. <laughs> right over there and talk to her. Isn't she like right behind us? Um, Alex, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm not letting anybody in. You don't know what you were talking about, little girl. What happens in this castle is none of your business. You should learn to keep your little worries to yourself or else something unfortunate may happen to you too. <gasps> and that's the tea. <gasps> and it's another timer quest. So we have to wait until tomorrow, but that gives us plenty of time to continue the quests around here in um what's this called the harvest counties it's right there what is this i'm not in a group why is there a group member there wait i don't even have any friends online why is there a group member picture there i don't even know all right so we have made it back to ed and hopefully he'll take us to yovik stables <gasps> He's about to. I'll help you get to your Vic stables, but first you need to help me a little. What? A blackmail? Why would I do anything like that? Well, Ed, let me tell you, it's because everyone on this island blackmails me into doing stuff for them. Nah, you help me and I'll help you. This is just an exchange of services. Please, I really need your help and I can't do it myself. Please, please, please. You will. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, first I'll need a pen and paper to write down all the things we need to do. I can't remember exactly where I put them, but they are around here somewhere. Well, there's paper behind you, so I would assume that you put it there. Oh, and a pen. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I think I see sparkles. Hey, sparkles. Excellent. Now I'm going to write a list of everything that we need to get done. I really feel like my brain might explode. Hey, what is your name? Cassandra? This is going to be great, Cassandra. Alright, so Ed needs a thinking hat to uh, be able to write down his list of things to do, I guess. But uh, he's lost it. Typical Jorvik person. Losing everything. Luckily, we were able to find it, though. Now we can help him out a little bit, I guess. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful thinking hat. All right, so he decided to call this in Wolf Hall Inn, and we have to help him with the undergrowth, or the, the undergrowth, the overgrowth, and guess what, guys? We get to use a chainsaw. Look at this. We are literally using a chainsaw right now my eye was itchy sorry <laughs> that was weird and the final clump of weeds goodbye chainsaw i will miss you <laughs> now we are finding ingredients for the food that he wants to cook at a um diner or a cafe or something um moose poo i mean maybe there's somewhat some sort of nutrition in there Ketchup, that's pretty normal. But it's it's tomato sauce. A packet of noodles, okay. But anyway, back to what I was saying. It's not ketchup, it's tomato sauce. A sack of oats and more moose poo. I wonder if he's gonna tell us that we didn't need to pick up the moose poo. Let's see, this will be perfect. Wait a minute, I can feel the inspiration coming. Hold on, a cyclone is brewing in my head again. And there we go, Wolf Hall Inn is now opened, complete with nice gardening, a little cafe as well. Not sure where the moose poo went though, so um, yes. We also have some shops to check out, which is quite fun. But um, I'm saving up all of my star coins on and your shillings until I'm like level 10 so I can do a little bit of a shopping spree. Thanks for your help, Cassandra. Now I'll keep my promise and tell you how to get to your Vic Stables. 
Ride like this. Continue on the road, heading west, and take a left at the mountain pass. Continue through the mountain pass and into Greendale Forest. Keep to the road and you'll soon see the coast again. There you'll see a small cottage where the Pike family live. Alright, and we need to take his chainsaw with us because the uh, pass can get pretty overgrown and we're also taking Miss Pike some deliveries or something and she'll show us where to head to your fixed stable. So let's go uh, Let's go through Greendale. I just stuttered, but um, I love Greendale. I think it's so pretty. Ever since the update, like Greendale went from like my favorite place to like my favorite place. And the update was a while ago. <laughs> We have hit our first bit of chainsaw work. I think there's going to be a lot of that around here. And dear chainsaw, it was not our final use of you. When we cut down these cut cut down those trees back at Wolf Hall in I cannot speak this late at night time. Heading through the first tunnel into Greendale. Are these old tree models? I think these are old tree models. Okay. And we have cut down all of the um, trees in the way, so now we can go back, go and get back onto Orca and ride to Miss Pike. See, Greendale's litter literally so pretty, especially with the music as well. The music's really pretty as well. Everything's just so nice in here, and all the little squirrels that run around. Oh my gosh, so cute! Hello, Miss Pike. Hello there, who are you? I haven't seen anyone on the road through Greendale in a very long time. Oh, she's casually just holding a fish. Just a fish, you know. Doesn't everyone just hold fish, you know? Alright, so Miss Pike wants us to help pick up some bottles down along the beach before we head to Yorvik Stables. Oh, I love the Harvest County. It's like, I can't wait for a Yarlheim update. It's gonna be so good. All right, and now we can head up to the Goldspur farm where one of the Goldspurs are going to help us continue on our journey to Yorvik Stables. Apparently I read it wrong and we're not going to Goldspur farm. We're going inside of Yarlheim. I swear I saw Goldspur somewhere. <laughs> As you can tell, I remember so much information from um, the quests that I read. I literally read them, but then I forget what I'm doing. It's really bad. Like... <laughs> What's the point of reading it when I don't even remember what I'm doing? Oh, we're talking to the mayor. Isn't he a Goldspur? I'm so confused. Howdy doody, I'm a Jax Goldspur. I knew it. He's a Goldspur. It's fine. I'm not going too crazy. Just like a little bit crazy. It's nice to see a new face in town. So who are you? I'm Cassandra. Hey Cassandra, welcome to Yalheim, pride of Southern Yorvik and the world's favorite place. What can I do for you, Cassandra? You need to see Herman. Aha, uh -huh. that was so typical. That's like the only thing I can't help you with. Herman has gone, disappeared, nowhere to be found. When I need him most, he goes on vacation. Do you have any idea how much trouble that causes me? Why do I need Herman? Well, I happen to be the mayor of Yalheim. A very honorable duty. Why me? No one else wanted it, so Herman asked if I would accept this respectable position. Excellent, I thought. As mayor, I'll get to experience fine dining, movie premiere premieres, sorry, cool parties, and lots of nice gifts all the time. But it isn't at all like that. I'm just shuffling paper all day. Now. How boring is that? I told Herman, but he said I should be proud of the responsibility, work hard and be a role model for city residents. Responsibility, leadership, role model, bah, yuck, oh, you can hear for yourself how incredibly boring it is. I've tried to get a hold of Herman to get him to take this worthless job back, but I can't because he is on vacation. I'm stuck. However, you can't fool this guy that easily. Listen up. I've come up with an awesome idea. I've called for an election because I'm quitting. Someone else can take over this lousy job. Ha. Huh. What? Oh, yes. What did you want, Cassandra? You want to find the way to Yorvik Stables? I know. Joanna who works... I know Joanna who works at Yorvik Stables. If you help me with my awesome plan, I'll call and tell her that you need to get a hold of Herman. She might be able to help you. Do, you ha do we have a deal? Good. Take these ballot papers for the new election and hand them out here in the city. Well, that was an interesting conversation. It seems that getting to Yalheim, uh, getting to Yorvik Stables is uh, a lot harder than it should be. 
And we have handed out the final letter. Did it go well? Nice. Okay, now it's time to start the next part of the plan. We have to find new candidates for this paid job. I've already spoken to the most suited, but they aren't willing when I ask them. However, if you do it instead, then they'll have to say yes. Why do they have to say yes when I say it? So I've been and talked to all of the candidates, but they all were not interested. And now we have to wait until tomorrow again to uh, continue this quest. So we are back here in Silverglade Village to go talk to Alex, which is really exciting because on the quest thing it says the journey to Veildale. So I think we get to meet at least Elizabeth today, which will be super exciting. But um, let's just get into the let's play, into the part, I guess. Okay, so this is all very interesting. What do we have? We know that Linda is being kept prisoner inside the castle, probably by Godfrey, on the Baroness's orders. We also know that the Baroness is extremely secretive about her former husband, John Sandman, who she even claims is dead. John Sandman is probably Justin's grandfather, the man Justin and Sabine have gone off to see. Call the police? Well, not yet I think, but maybe soon. Listen, there's someone I need you to talk to who will be able to help us. Her name is Elizabeth Sunbeam and she is my mentor. You'll find her in Veildale. Have you ever been there before? Northeast of Silverglade Village, you'll find Wills Mill Road, which later becomes the Veildale Way. Follow that road north. Yes, we're gonna go meet Elizabeth. And I'm probably not going to uh, ride over there because um, I'm tired. It's like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> Turns out we have to ride there because I haven't been there, so the trailer isn't there. <sighs> Alright, we're going for a long journey. Alright, we finally made it to Elizabeth and ooh! There's a horsey! <laughs> Cassandra, I've been waiting for you. How did I know you were coming? Oh, there's nothing mysterious about that. Alex sent me a text message, so tell me what's going on. Right, I see. The Baroness seems highly involved in this, or else she would have let Linda out when you girls demanded it. At the same time, there is something she's trying to hide about her past. I have a feeling that both these matters are deeply intertwined. The Silverglades were a powerful family who reigned over practically all of Jorvik, and to this day, their members still have influential positions in the Jorvik gov council, not government. <laughs> The Silverglades are used to getting what they want. They have stumbled across something much more complicated than oh, you have stumbled across something much more complicated than you could ever imagined. Are you willing to continue helping us, Cassandra? Why is everyone trusting this random stranger? I don't understand. <laughs> Good, we will need you. What bothers me the most is Sabine's involvement in all of this. I cannot tell you why that is. What is what is it? Oh my gosh, I can't read. I'm so sorry. What is it they want with Justin? The only way of answering that is to find out who this Mr. Sandman is, as he is supposed, supposedly Justin's grandfather. We'll get there in the end, guys. We'll get there. Before you continue on to Fergrove to do further research, I would like to, you to do something for me. It may seem strange to you now, but there is a reason why I'm asking you to do this. You will need this stick. Have you seen the rune stones on the hill behind the house? What you need to do is stand in front of the stones and really concentrate. Hold this artifact and watch the inscriptions intensely. When you have done this, come back to me and let me know if you felt anything unusual. I have pictures of me doing this. I have pictures of me doing this on my first account. I don't think I'm going to be able to find them, but I have them. Oh my gosh. I think they're in one of my old videos. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so... Oh my gosh. <laughs> we are waving a wand. I can see much waving going around. Oh, oh my gosh. There's a light. And there's another light. Oh, that one made an interesting sound. So, tell me what happened. They all started to glow. That's... that's very remarkable, Cassandra. It's the first time anybody... I mean... Thank you for your participation. Will you do me a favour and please keep this to yourself? Well, you can tell Alex, if you must. After all, she is a member of our society, the Keepers of Aideen. That's all you need to know for now. 
Oh, secretive. And we also got a helmet. <gasps> Isn't it a gorgeous color? Actually, it's not the worst color in the world. According to the registration books, John Sandman grew up in Fergrove. You should ride over there and talk to the villagers. Maybe they know who he is. Villagers? Now I'm thinking Minecraft. <laughs> There's a shortcut to Virgrove through the mountains. The path may be a little difficult to find, but it's located southeast of the cross country trail. Oh, yes, we get a black jumper. Oh my gosh. Love it. I'm probably going to wear that one now. All right, so if you guys don't know where the little passage is to Virgrove from Baledale, um, the little secret one, I thought I would show you guys because I know that some of you don't play Star Stable yet or you guys are new to the game because of my series, but you basically follow the signs to Veildale Lake and once you're here, you just ride through this little archway and you ride across the bridge. Oh gosh, sorry. Oh my gosh. I choked on my own words. You then just ride up here, this little mountain. And now uh, my voice is still dying, but uh, yeah. You are then on the Fergrove Mountain Passage and you just follow this passage until you come to Fergrove. All right, you guys, we've made it into Fergrove. Now, who am I going to talk to? We're gonna talk to the stable girl. Stable girls are very useful, very um, knowledgeful, I guess. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Fergrove. We just had our cross country riding track rebuilt and we're all super excited. Hey, what if you tried it out? As an experienced rider, you could probably give us some tips on how best to ride it to get the best results. What a great idea. There are also a lot of regular stable chores to do here, but I can see you've got other things to do first. If you want to try the track out, just talk to Minka. She's standing at the starting line by the sandpit where Andy keeps his sheep. All these names, poor little me would probably not know yet, but oh look, we got a jumper and it's black. I kind of actually, it doesn't look very good in this outfit. We need some white to break it up. So still not going to be wearing a sweater today. What? Is there anyone you can talk to who has lived here a long time? Well, you've come to the right place. Fergrove is full of old men and women that grew up here. Most of them are really nice and they love reminiscing about the past. It can be a bit of a drag sometimes, but hey, maybe it just for me. All right, so now we have to go talk to a bunch of people, I guess. First lady, no usable information known. Lady number two. Oh, she knew some stuff. Dear girl, I'm so happy to meet you. What's your name? Cassandra? What a lovely name, dear. John Sandman, you say? It does ring a bell. Actually, John Sandman. Sandman. <laughs> My memory may not be as good as it once was, but I think that John Sandman was the man I paid my, paid my rent to when I first took over this house. Come to think of it, he's still the one I write my checks to. Let me check my receipts. Yes, that's the name all right. He must be a kind soul, Mr. Sandman. Seventy years and he never once raised my rent. Take the receipt if you'd like. That's suspicious. Oh, level nine! Guys, we made it to level nine! Oh, this is so exciting. Now that I think about it, I seem to remember that Mr. Sandman was on the village council back in the day. You should head over to the Fergrove Town Hall and ask Mr. Franklin if he has seen any photos of the council from that time. Alright, let's go talk to the, uh, to the, what was his name, the mayor? I don't think it's the mayor, the councilman. There we go. Mr. Franklin. Ha! Huh, what are the odds? A strange girl was just here, asking that same question about John Sandman. And what's more, when I showed her the picture, she produced a pocket knife and cut him out of the photograph. I can't believe you youngsters. Just because you can do something on a computer doesn't mean you can do the same things in the real world. Without any, oh, in the real world without any consequences. These aren't some poxy social media pictures. This was a good photograph, an old, high quality photo paper. Was her name Sabine? I don't know, she didn't tell me, but she was wearing a dark hood that covered her face and she took off in the blackest horse I've ever seen. This is suspicious. They're on to us. They know what we're doing. They know that we're looking for Mr. Sandman. Oh my gosh, that's the tea. So much tea. <laughs> yes, she had a big black horse and a red and black coat. 
cloak. But look, she's still over there by the gate. Hey, come back here, you hooligan. Go get the picture back for me, will you? I will, Mr. Franklin. I will try my hardest. It is Sabine, oh my gosh. It's also not, like, the blackest horse I've ever seen. Like, I don't know what they're talking about with that. <sighs> Turn around. Ride. I'm on such a slow horse. Where do you think she's gonna go? Can I cut her off somehow? I think I can cut her off if I go down here. Ha! Huh? Do I have to- What? I didn't catch her? I thought I caught her. I for sure caught her. Come on, we've got her. We've got her. There we go. Get the picture. Oh no, she just faded away. <gasps> she just faded away. I don't even know if we got the photograph. Did we get the photograph? You got it back. Okay, we did get it. It seems that your generation is an incomplete decline after all. Good work. I hope I'll be able to restore the picture. Do you want a copy of this? I'll make one for you. Here is the copy of the photograph. Mr. Packyard called when you were out chasing that hooligan. Apparently, she found the rental invoice. Good luck. Thank you. Oh, and we get some nice purple pants. Wow, we're going to be so stylish. <sighs> now, dear, I've got your rental invoice. See, the center has a post office box in Silverglade. Does that help? Here, take the invoice. It's months old. Good luck with your research, dear. Oh, you're off to see Elizabeth. Do tell her I said hi. Elizabeth is such a lovely girl and always welcome here in Fergrove. Will do, Miss Packard. Thank you for your help. And look at these beautiful purple pants that we have acquired. Oh my gosh, they do be fabulous though. Oh, wait, wait. I have got the best outfit for us. Oh my gosh. Wow, we do be looking stylish. <laughs> Why was I actually tempted to keep it for a second? I wanted to put it in the thumbnail. Maybe I will. I'm not sure. <laughs> Welcome back, Cassandra. What have you found? A photo of Mr. Sandman? I see. And this? This might be the number of his post office box? Good detective work. Wait a minute. This looks like... There's a man known as Mr. Sands who looks frighteningly like this person in the picture. <gasps> Mr. Sands is the leader of Dark Core, an organization with an even darker agenda than that of GED. And that's the T. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have you shown this to Alex? She would be really interested in seeing this photo. She, is forced, she has fought against Mr. Sands before, you see, and has a deep hatred of him. She will be able to tell whether or not the man in this photo and Mr. Sands are the same person. <gasps> I'm getting chills, you guys. I don't know why, but I have, like, chills. Oh, my gosh. Honestly, the storyline of Star Stable is just so cool. I really like it. I think it's really fun. What have you found? A picture of John Sandman? Let me see. Oh, no, that's him. Mr. Sands. How did I miss that? Am I really that naive? So this means that Mr. Sands is Justin's grandfather and that Justin could be in real danger. <gasps> you have an idea? Tell me about it. Okay, so you got the address to this post office box that belongs to Mr. Sands? Really? That's a great lead. So what's the plan? A letter? That sounds very exciting. Okay, so let me see if I got this straight. You're suggesting that we send a fake letter to Mr. Sands post office box just to make him go there and get it? That way, you can watch the office from a distance and check if he's actually alive and active in Jorvik. Wait, I think I have an env empty envelope with me. Here it is, and voila, a pencil. The only thing I don't have is a stamp. Ask Judy in the stable. I bet she has some. Cassandra, what are you up to? Do I have a postage stamp? I sure do. Okay, here's your stamp. Let me put it on for you. There, you'll find the mailbox right by the gates of the manor. Alright, let's mail away this letter and go talk back to Alex. I have a feeling that this is going to run us into another daily quest, but I'm not quite sure. As in, like, we have to wait a day? I'm not sure. 
You put it in the mailbox? Great. Yep, okay, I was right. Because, like, when you mail stuff, it's going to take a while. But today we are doing more story quests. And, um, I did, like, a very small amount of questing on my Sunday stream. Like, you guys literally did not miss anything if you didn't watch it. We are back here talking with Alex. I think we're finding out the Linda mystery. Listen, when you go to Silverglade Village, whatever you do, don't get too close to this man. That's right, we sent Mr. Sandman a letter in the mail. He's dangerous, okay? I don't mean to sound like your mum or anything, but I can't let anything happen to you. We need your help, Cassandra. Take these binoculars. They're pretty good. Stay at the other end of the square opposite the post office and sit down at the coffee shop. You may have to wait a while before Mr. Sandman appears. Let's just hope it won't take too long. Oh, we get beautiful pants. All right, let's go. I feel like I get so excited over like the smallest um, item clothing. Oh my god, my brain just left me. It's like I get excited over clothing that we get for free, which isn't even like pretty clothing, but like I'm still excited. <laughs> right, we're well, here at Silverglade Village. We're gonna go sit down at the cafe, I guess. Do I have to get off my horse? Yeah, I think I have to get off my horse and use the binoculars. All right, let's use the binoculars at the table. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh gosh, this is gonna take a while. Still waiting, still sitting here waiting. Okay, yeah, I'm tired. Oh, something's happening. <laughs> oh my god, it's Mr. Sands. Mr. Sandman. He really needs an update though. Like, he needs an update, Star Stable. Oh my god, this brings back memories. I'm sad. And the fact that I played this on like a laggy computer and now I'm not. I'm on a good computer now. It's so like, oh, did he even, I think he took the mail and now he's left. What do we do now? Go back to Alex, I'm assuming. Yeah, we go back to the Silverglade Manor. Manor? Manor? I'm losing brain cells by the second. This is exciting. Alright, let me tell you what I found, Alex. So Mr. Sands and Mr. Sandman are the same person? That explains it. Now we know what kind of tragedy Justin is involved in. He's not only gone to visit his grandfather, but is probably going to be held prisoner and get brainwashed by Dark Core. We now know why the Baroness has been acting so strange as well. She was in fact married to Mr. Sands himself. The slimiest slug in all of Jorvik. I can see why she doesn't want that out in the open. While you were down in the village, both Godfrey and the Baroness arrived. Let's see what the Baroness has to say about all of this. Ooh, confrontation. Let's go, Alex. Can you do the speaking though? Because like, I don't want to feel her wrath. <laughs> Oh dear, this is so embarrassing. I'll explain everything, of course I will. The way I've been behaving, it's its simply not acceptable behaviour for someone like me. I can only blame it on the constant stress I've been under lately. What with GED threatening to, d d d d d <laughs> to destroy this vineyard and the island, not to mention the merciless winter. I'm too old for this. That must be it. It makes me act like a wicked old hag. Let me tell you girls what happened. Story time! Young Linda Chanda works for me a few hours a week, helping with filing, reading to me from my favorite mysteries and other odd jobs not handled by Godfrey or Carney. She has quite a head on her shoulders. Your friend, equally adept, adept with numbers and writing curious too curious to a fault the other day i took linda away from usual work around the manor to silverglade castle to clean up in the attic it was a grave mistake apparently i had an old wedding photo lying around one of me and the man that i used that used to be my husband mr sandman you'll have to excuse me but i just can't say his new name i just can't. Anyway, Linda recognized my husband as well as Mr. Well, as that man. She confronted me and I panicked. Nobody could find out. It would destroy this family's reputation that's been built up over hundreds of years. 
I left her there and had Godfrey lock Linda in the castle to keep her from telling anyone. It was a rash and foolish plan. I'm ashamed, truly I am, but despite my best efforts, it seems these shadows from the past are coming into the light. Now that you caught up in this tragic tale, I suppose I owe you the full story. <gasps> Even longer story time. It's a long and painful story, one I am not yet prepared to tell in full, but since you found out this much on your own, I owe you more. My first husband was not the man I thought I had married. He was dangerous. We eloped. My parents never approved of the union. At first our life together was pure bliss, but then he changed, or rather he became confident in sharing things that he'd kept hidden when we were when he came courting dark things he believed he heard voices from the sea they promised him eternal life and power and this voice he said it chose me this voice from the sea had a role for me in his plan when i realized i was his child i left the marriage at what i i'm sorry what oh Oh my god, it would help if I read the with. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> when I realized I was with his child, I left the marriage at once. I had the child in secrecy and gave it up for adoption so that horrible man would never have to know his wicked parents. My parents were supportive. They helped me bury that dark chapter of my life. When Linda showed me the photograph, all those terrible memories came flooding back. That was why I acted as I did. That and the girl Sabine. Ever since she came to my stables, my head has been clouded with dark thoughts. Angry thoughts. Only now that she is gone is my mind clearing up. Now, Alex, Cassandra, if there is anything I can do to make amends for the way I treated poor Linda, just ask. Um, can you please, like, release Linda from the castle? That would be helpful. The Baroness is a powerful ally. Her family is one of the most influential in Jorvik. She's the top sponsor for riding events in the area and even makes her riding arena free to the community. And, of course, she has a banging library that makes Linda drool, literally. Normally, I'd go full revenge mode on anyone who locked up one of my best friends, but given the circumstances, I think we should take the Baroness at her word. Mr. Sands and the Dark Riders have a way of getting into people's heads. I say we accept the Baroness' apology and keep her secret. I will agree with you, Alex, because you seem like a smart person. Thank you for your understanding. I do hope we can let these unpleasant memories stay where they belong, in the past. If there is ever anything I can do to assist you, do not hesitate to ask. And tell dear Linda when you see her that if she'll have me, she can continue her job at double the pay. I would hate to lose an assistant like her. You should let your friend out of the castle. Godfrey has the key. Hello, Godfrey. Please give me the key. Certainly, miss. I am sure I have the key somewhere here. In this pocket? No, maybe here... Hmm. Oh my gosh, Godfrey, are you kidding me? There's the key. I always hide it in my shoe, just but just forgot it this time. Here you are. You and Alex can ride down to the castle and unlock the castle door and let your friend out. Okay, I remember being so excited for this quest because like unlocking the castle was a big deal for me. Oh my gosh, I'm actually so excited to unlock the castle again. Let's go. I don't think we're going to make it to level 10 today, but like, we're making progress. We're getting there. I'm actually so surprised that we're already level 9 though, like, it feels like a big deal, but maybe it's not? I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I remember unlocking the castle for the first time. Oh my gosh. Let's dismount and use the key then, I guess. I think you have to dismount. Oh no, we don't. Okay. <gasps> the music! The music! Do we get to talk to Linda? <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god, it's Linda! <gasps> Linda! Hello! Hello! Oh, the bright light hurts my eyes! What? I'm free? You are! You're free! <gasps> Look, and they get to reunite! Linda and Alex! The music! 
I'm like living my best life right now. <laughs> you freed me. Thanks, Cassandra, wasn't it? From the runestone? I see Alex didn't scare you off. I'm glad you decided to stick around. You two are not going to believe what I discovered about the Silverglade family. The Baroness used to be married to our old nemesis, Mr. Sands. She went through great pains to bury that part of her past, and when I confronted her with the evidence, she panicked and had me locked in the castle. I'm sorry, Linda, but you're a little late to telling us this information. We kind of found out ourselves. What's that? You already knew about her secret marriage. How much did I miss? You'll have to catch me up. Oh, of course, Linda. We'll have to, like, go out for coffee. <laughs> um, so the Baroness eloped with Mr. Sands for a brief tumultuous tumultuous <laughs> marriage shortly after she had a child thomas who she tried to keep secret from her dark ex-husband thomas grew up without knowing his heritage and had a son justin flash forward to the present mr sands learned about his secret pro progency pro pro progency i can't speak progen progeny progeny oh my god i don't even know and sent his dark rider sabine to bring justin to meet him for what reason we can't speculate but it can't be good combine all that with the fact that runestones have been lighting up with pandoric energy and it's clear the soul riders are going to need all the help they can get yes sister squad oh my gosh Look, I get it, Cassandra. You came to Jorvik to ride horses and relax, not take on dark riders, kidnappers, and family curses, and things are only going to get more dangerous from here on out. Linda and I are soul riders, saving the world. It's saving the world, it's sort of our job, but like Linda said, we're gonna need help. It's clear that you care about this island. You're brave, you've got a good head on your shoulders, and you've got a real gift in working with horses. That means something. The bond between a horse and its rider, that's magic. Bottom line, Cassandra, we need riders like you. Will you help us? Yes, I will. I will help you. I knew we could count on you. This is going to be great. Just wait until you learn about the ancient evil squid god thing. <laughs> Seriously though, things are going to get weird. But you won't be alone. You're riding with the soul riders now. Speaking of soul riders, we really need to regroup if we're going to deal with the struggles ahead. The four of us are a sisterhood. Our powers are the st are strongest when we're together. It's been a while since we've heard from Lisa and Anne. We'll find them soon. I can't wait for you to meet them. In the meantime, keep doing your thing, Cassandra. Train with Arctic Orb and work on your bond. Get to know Elizabeth and the Keepers of Aideen. Explore Jorvik and most of all, help people. This island, it's people and horses. That's what we live for. <gasps> See you around the runestones, Cassandra. Oh my gosh, and now it's over. Oh no, we get to speak to Linda. Is this like... Is this a story quest speaking to Linda? Yeah, it is. Okay, I'm excited. Okay. Next story of the quest. Next quest of the story? I don't know. Once again, thank you for helping me out of the castle. Unfortunately, I have a lot to do now as that I've been away for so long. But as you know, there's always a lot to do around here. You'll notice that little adventures pop up all the time, so we'll have time to... Uh, so we'll have time to do lots of stuff together. For now, we're waiting until the druids can bring us more news of Dark Core. Until then, there are all kinds of people over Jorvik and many could use a helping hand from an experienced writer. Perhaps you could find someone who needs your help. Have a lovely day, Cassandra. Come back and we'll see if there's any news. Oh no, so it is the end. Okay, no new quest for us then I guess, but um... So we do not have any main quests available, maybe one will come available in the upcoming days. But we do have a lot of side quests to get through. So today we don't have any uh, story quests to do, any main quests. So um, I think it's time that we re- uh, I can't speak. That we revisit some of the um, older quests that we didn't quite finish yet. So since we're already in Silverglade, I decided that maybe we should try and finish off the storyline with Bonnie. So if we can recall a little bit, Bonnie ran away because she accidentally broke the clock or the clock stopped working um so she ran away from the village because she thought that everyone was going to hate her 
because the clock stopped working. So um, we went and found her and we've brought her back to Silverglade Village and we're gonna try and fix the clock. That's just a little rundown for you guys, but if you wanna see all the quests, then there is also a playlist of all back to the beginning episodes that you guys can watch through. But here we are with Big Bunny and let's get started. Even if my tools were repaired, it's not enough. We need oil to lubricate the mechanism. Actually, quite a lot of oil since it stood still for all these years and who would, and who would have any oil around here? Nobody, no chance. Steve, oh yeah. He's probably got oil. But even so, dear Cassandra, it's never going to work. You want to try anyway? Ugh. Well, give it a try. Here's an empty oil bottle. Go and talk to Steve if you like. And what else does she want us to get? Oh, what a disaster. Just when I thought I was going to be able to return to my old life, the wicked fingers of chance crush my dreams. How can life be so hideous and unkind? My tools destroyed. Can they be repaired? Never. Impossible. How would we do that? It's over now, Cassandra. It's all over. Just let me get back into that sack and you can take me back to the silo. You want to have a go at repairing the tools? Yeah, and pigs might fly. What's that? You have friends who can help you? The blacksmith? Eh, uh, he's very good, but not even he could repair these. I think you underestimate Con Conrad. <laughs> well, things can't get any worse than they are now. So give it a try, but don't get upset if it doesn't work. You need to trust me, Bonnie. I know what I'm doing, apparently. Like, I do know what I'm doing. <laughs> So we're going to stop by Steve's farm first, and then we'll go to Conrad later. Oil? Why yes, I do indeed have some right here. Thank you, Steve. There's oil in that tank over there, don't you remember, Cassandra? Hmm, you think it's diesel? Uh, it's not that big a difference. My diesel is particularly oily diesel, diesel, so it'll work just as well. Trust me. All you need to do is take your bottle and fill it up. I'm sure you can do that yourself. Oh my gosh. Stacy was like, we need someone with oil. You know what? Let's just use the diesel from Steve's farm, but just make it oily diesel. That'll work. Yeah. <laughs> Filling up the water jug. There's no animation, but that's fine. There you go. Now you've got a full bottle of oil or diesel. Oh, well, diesel oil. <laughs> Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Uh. And now you have a full bottle of diesel oil, Cassandra. Hope it'll be of use. Take care, see ya. Thank you so much, Steve. We will be back probably soon. And now before going back to Big Bunny, I think we're going to go down to Moorland and um, see if Conrad can fix our tools. Where am I going? <laughs> Hello, Conrad. Fancy seeing you here. Hi there, Cassandra. Might I help you with something? Why, yes, you can, Conrad. Repair the clockmaker's tools? I wouldn't normally work on something so small, but because you're the one asking, I can make an exception. It's not a simple project you're asking me to do. In fact, it's probably the most difficult thing you could ask a blacksmith to do, even a blacksmith as experienced as I. In order for me to be able to do this, I'll need your help. You need to get me iron from the heart of Garnock's fury, deep down in the volcano which sprays death and destruction all over Jorvik. It's a perilous journey, full of danger. You'll be away from the safe embrace of Jorvik for quite some time. Worry not, little Cassandra, I'll help you. In that box over there by the house, there's a tent you can borrow for the journey. Fetch it and I'll tell you more. Um, okay. This doesn't sound um, suspicious at all. Excellent, you've got the tent. Good, now listen carefully. Your journey to the heart of Garnock is going to take at least a month, and during that time, you're not going to be able to see any of your friends or your horses. Horses are forbidden where you're going, so you're going to have to leave Arctic Orb behind as well. A whole month without your friends or horses. It's a serious sacrifice, but I'm, unha I'm happy I can rely on you to see it through. So, Cassandra, are you ready to start your journey? Um, Conrad... Okay, I knew he was joking. <laughs> I was like, you have to be joking, Conrad. Oh, he's laughing so much. Oh my gosh. I was just joking, Cassandra. What a world-class joke. I can't, I don't just forge the best tools. I forge the best jokes as well. <laughs> oh my gosh, Conrad. Those tools were so easy to repair that I managed to fix the whole lot while you were rummaging around in that box over there. 
What a totally outrageous joke I created. In a hundred years, they'll still be talking about the funniest joke in the history of your work. Here are the tools, Cassandra. Give them to your friend, the clockmaker. Oh my god. He's gonna, like, be laughing just, like, for the rest of the day or something. Oh my gosh, Conrad. Hey, I bought pets, but I can't see them in my saddlebag. What happened to my pets? Wait, what the heck? Oh, that was on my UK account. Never mind. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, we have your oil. <sighs> you filled the border with oil. Oh, excellent. Maybe there's a chance the winds of luck could change after all. It all came to nothing, didn't it? Do I want to see the tools? Ugh, what's the difference? Would it? What difference would it make? I'm sorry, I cannot read sometimes. Wait, they look brand new. Have the winds of destiny finally changed? I told you, Bonnie. You need to. Whoops. <laughs> you need to trust me. This is our chance, Cassandra. It's time to repair the clock. It's a very serious de defect. And if I wasn't such a master clockmaker, I would probably have been forced to give up. But fear not. I'll explain exactly what you need to do to repair it. Wait, why am I repairing it when you're the master clockmaker? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, she's answering my question. Why am I not doing it myself? Well, I'm sure you understand that it was a deeply troubling and emotional experience for me to come back to the scene of my own personal apocalypse, and I genuinely don't believe I'll ever be able to go there again. I was about to faint and fall down while I was up there. It could have been the end of me. I can't go back. I really want you to help with this. Help me with this, Cassandra. Not for my sake, but for the sake of my sweet, sweet villagers. Don't leave them high and dry, forced to live every day in a meaningless, clockless life. You'll help me? Marvellous. Now I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. The most important thing is that you carry out the stages in the right order. If you do it, ju if you do it right, the clock will tick once more. If you do it wrong, then you just need to cross your fingers that it's not serious and come back to me so you can have another try. Here's what you need to do. Let's try and remember this. Step 1. Use the wrench on the wheel by the clock face. Step 2. Pour oil into the big funnel. Step 3. Use the clock winding key to wind up the spring. Step 4. Pull the lever to start the clock. And step 5. Cross your fingers. My favourite step is step 5. I think it's the most important thing that we need to do. Alright, so hopefully we can remember this. Good luck. Thank you. I think I'm going to need it. Alright, so actually I think it's going to be in our quest log here. Maybe it'll have all the steps here. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and to the clock tower. I just went the weird way, but it's fine. All right, let's go in here. And um, we have to use the wrench on the wheel by the clock face. So I'm guessing it's right here. Here's the wrench. Pour oil into the big funnel. Maybe that's a bit higher. Yes, okay, is this a big funnel? Yeah, it is a big funnel. Pour oil in there. Use the clock winding key, so I guess that's below us. Clock winding key. Actually, I think it shows us what to do step by step anyway. So, um, I got too stressed for no reason. Let's turn it up and um, pull the lever to start the clock. Where's the lever? Where's the lever? Oh, the lever's up here, okay. I feel like I just said lever really weirdly. Did I say like an American, the lever? The lever's up here. Um, I'm sorry if I just offended all of the Americans. Oh, it's ticking! Oh my gosh! It's moving! Look! We fixed it! What's with the suspicious music, though? It sounds like galloping horses. The music's, like, an interesting choice. It sounds like we've done something wrong. We've, like, uncovered a mystery by starting the clock again. All right, let's go tell Bonnie the good news. You've repaired the clock. Hooray. I've repaired the clock. Hooray for me. I'm a hero, a solid gold hero. I shan't forget you, Cassandra, I promise. When I get my medal for amazingness, I'll give you a special mention in my acceptance speech. 
And just like that, the clock has been fixed. Oh, the music! The music! <gasps> the music! Because it's definitely moving right now, yes. <laughs> Oh, this is so sweet. Silver Glades Clock is working again, thanks to Big Bonnie and you. <laughs> oh, people are tagging me on the Discord so server. All right, let's talk to Big Bonnie. Not to brag, but I do rather believe that now I'll get both a medal and probably some flowers from the councilman. Maybe he'll even organize a parade or festival in my honor. I'm pretty sure he will. Oh, today is a wonderful day. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? Um, oh, we're going to the councilman, of course. Runs like the wind straight to the councilman. <laughs> oh, hello, Clockmaker Big Bonnie. Not seen you for a while. Well, well, Big Bunny, nice to see you again. Listen, while you're here, do you think you could have a look at the broken village clock? Hmm, oh, it's fixed already. Well, excellent. Thanks for that. Now, you'll have to excuse me. I've got lots to do, lots to be getting on with, so we'll have to talk more another time. Bye. Oof, we just got rejected, Bonnie. What? What did he say? He hasn't even noticed I've been away. Am I that insignificant? Meh. Am I not worth more than that? Oh no, she's crying again. So nobody's even noticed that I've been away for years. This is horrendous. I'm worthless. A little meaningless insect. An ant. A, a louse? A, a, what, a lice? How, what is that insect? I'm searching it up, hang on. <laughs> yeah, it's a lice. Ew, they look disgusting. I thought so. I thought it was um, lice that was spelt weirdly. Okay, that's ill. I can't get the image out of my head anymore. Um, <laughs> excuse me, Cassandra. I have to return to the silo and live out the rest of my pointless days in sorrow and loneliness. Don't be negative, Bonnie. Hi, Cassandra. Can I help you with something? Why does Big Bonnie look so sad? What's happened? Oh, no. Oh, now I understand. So she's lived in exile for years because she made a mistake that she thought would destroy the whole village and now she's repaired the broken clock and thought she'd be carried through the streets in celebration. How should we go about fixing this, Cassandra? Everyone has wristwatches and cell phones these days, so nobody really needs the town hall clock. It's mostly just nice to look at. Hmm. Well, we have to try and get Big Bonnie in a better mood. Let me have another word with her, Cassandra. Clockmate... Clockmaker Big Bunny, please do excuse what I said earlier. You see, without the town hall clock to wake me every morning, I've slept so badly that I've basically turned into a zombie. I think that's why my reaction earlier was so, um, casual. Now, the news has sunk into my slow-moving brain. Oh my god, that is a mood. Like, councilman, join the club, slow-moving brains forever. <laughs> What you have done is totally wonderful. Just think, when you left the town, we were so furious and disappointed in you. We just couldn't understand. This is not helping her, but okay. And understand how we could, how you could have left us with a broken clock. But after some time, we began to understand what a terribly difficult job you had. Especially all of us, after all of us tried to fix it. Tried to fix the clock and all of us failed horribly. Now you're back and in less than a day, you've got everything fixed. You're a true her hero. As a thank you for your efforts, I hereby declare you Silverglade Clockmaker of the Highest Order. Clockmaker Big Bonnie, thank you again. Please never leave the village again. We just couldn't survive without you. Oh, we get a shirt. I do like shirts. <laughs> Oh, Cassandra, I knew it. Not to be big-headed, but like you said, without me, the village would never survive. I'll leave the village... I'll never leave the village again. Never, ever. Thank you for all your help, Cassandra. Here's a lovely little thing for you as a token of my gratitude. Now I have to get home again. There's a lot of cleaning to do after five years. Come and visit me. You should... Come and visit me should you ever find the time. Goodbye. <gasps> Bye, Bonnie. Big Bonnie disappears in the direction of her house to celebrate. You'll meet again in the future. And stuff that I didn't get to see. But we got a shirt. This is so good. I'm going to wear this shirt, actually. It kind of matches the outfit anyway. So I don't really know what other quests to do. So um, I don't know what to do. There's like so many quests that I don't know where to start. 
you know what, let's go to Fort Pinter because I think that there's a few short quests at Fort Pinter which we can just spend the last few minutes of the episode doing. Alright, so we've run into, I think her name is Sandra. So let's talk to, oh it's Sindra, sorry. Let's um, talk to her because I think she starts a race or something, I'm not sure. And I'm not going to read through these, I'm just going to kind of like go along the quest with you guys. Alright, so we're giving Syndra a lift to Fort Pinter, so let's go. We'll uh, try not to, like, run her off or anything. She actually looks really updated. I don't remember her looking that updated, but okay. Her legs are so long, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, why is the security guard here? <laughs> Gotta be honest, that, like, kind of scared me a little bit, but not really. Whoa, stop right there. Oh, I said I wasn't gonna read it. <laughs> Alright, so we have to go talk to James because apparently we got a bunch of violations and we have to spend like 10,000 Yorvik shillings on them. Fun! James, you know, I thought you were a nice person, you know, my buddy, but no, no, you're not nice at all. Alright, so apparently he, ha he has some horses which he wants us to collect by the market. And uh, this is supposedly going to help pay for some of the fines that we owe him. So let's just go do that. Can I say that I really love Cinder's outfit? Like, I want that shirt. Can I have that shirt, please? Alright, here are the horses. Very pretty horses. So do I have to herd them all? Oh, we have to talk to Cinder. Okay. So apparently uh, we're just exercising the horses. And maybe James isn't doing fishy business. So let's just go collect all of the horses. Can I herd them all at once or is this not going to work out? <laughs> this could end up being a pain. Why are we going down to the beach, Syndra? Why aren't we just going along the road? Where are you going? Why does this horse like to go out of my way? Are you kidding me, horse? Just drink the water if you're thirsty, but I've got these other three horses to herd. Where are you going, buddy chum? No, where are you going, buddy chum friend pal? Right, you guys keep going and I have to go grab these guys. This is one of the most tedious tasks you can do in Star Stable, like I swear. <laughs> they just keep splitting and it's so annoying. We are almost there, 10 minutes later, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank gosh. Let's go talk to James. I don't actually have a plan to start here in Fort Pinta. I don't really know what quests we're gonna do because we currently don't have any main quests, which is the one that I like to focus on. So I'm trying to find something that, um, but um, I don't really know which one's going to lead us in the direction of story quests, but I guess we're just going to find one. You know, maybe we'll, we will just do all of the quests here in Fort Pinta. Um, I haven't been on Star Stable. Oh my god, okay, we've got a few Star Coins, so as soon as we hit level 10, we're going to go on a little bit of a shopping spree, which is pretty exciting. But let's just start here with James. Hunting for tourists. This is what happened. Three tourists hired horses from me and went out for a ride, but they haven't returned. They're not very experienced riders, so I gave them my calmest horses, but I'm worried that something has happened or that they might that they have gotten lost. Oh, is I think this does lead towards um story quest, because isn't this like the three tourists? <laughs> okay. They should have taken the trail north past Doyle's Abbey and then continued northeast towards Silverglade Castle via Steve's farm. Start looking at Doyle's Abbey, please. Okay, James. Fine. We'll go look for your tourist. <laughs> what time is it on the server right now? Because I feel like I'm recording this at almost 10 p.m. It's 7. Okay, so it's like an okay to- Oh my god, I haven't looked at all of the new championships yet. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. I have some video ideas to do with these. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of scary, kind of daunting. <laughs> 6 a.m. Who gets up at 6 a.m.? Oh, me, apparently. I get up at 6 a.m. on this server. <laughs> oh gosh. We found them. Yes, these are the tourists that I was talking about. <laughs> Guten Tag, young lady. My name is Gunther. Yes, I'm one of the tourists that hired horses at Fort Pinta. Where is my horse and the others, you ask? You could say I'm wondering the same thing. 
We were out riding and having a nice trip right up until my horse suddenly spotted a huge bumblebee and went completely nuts. He ran off with me, barely hanging on around his neck and apparently my family couldn't keep up with me. Suddenly the horse stopped. I fell off and the horse ran away. Can you help me find it? Bring it back to me so I can ride back to Fort Penta. I'm sure that the horse isn't too far away. I thought I heard it neighing around the eastern side of the abbey ruins. Okay, I don't know my geography, so I'm just going to follow the map. <laughs> We are now bonding with the walls. Okay, so I guess we have to follow it back maybe. I'm guessing that's what we're doing. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. All right. Splendid. There's my nice little horse. Thank you for your help. Now I can ride to ba ride back to Fort Pinter by myself. My wife and daughter, Helga and Gretchen, must have thought that I could take care of myself and went on without me. Go to Steve's farm and then to the castle to see if you can find them. I'll go back to Fort Pinter and tell James what's happened so he doesn't worry. You are more capable of riding around and looking for them than I am, so I think this is the best solution. That sounds like a smart idea, Gunther. Is it Gunther? I think it's Gunther, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce things. <laughs> Right, so it looks like we have found, is it Helga? Helga and Gretchen? I can't remember. Is it Helga? Yay, okay. Um, hello, my name is Helga. You're out looking for us? You've already found Gunther too? That's good. We could really use some help. My daughter Gretchen's horse is stuck in a hole in the ground and we can't get him out. That doesn't sound very good. The horse stepped into one of these deep holes and can't get out. I wonder where all those dangerous holes came from. They're bad for the horses. Oh, you know Steve who runs the farm over there? Do you think you can borrow a shovel from him? That's wonderful. Go and get the shovel so we can get the horse out of the hole. Why can't you go over there? I don't understand, but okay. Oh, you want to borrow a shovel? It's really serious that there are holes in the ground that are both dangerous for people and animals. Take the shovel and help the poor tourist, but be careful so you don't hurt the horse. Bring back the shovel when you're done and tell me what happened. Okay. Those holes are like ginormous though. Like they would swallow me. Like they, I could just slide easy into one of them. Like, look, I would just like slide down there. No problems. <laughs> Digging. There's no animation for this one. That's kind of sad. Okay, let's talk to Helga. Well done, thanks for your help. Now we can return to Fort Pinter. Thanks for helping us. While you return the shovel to Steve, we'll ride back to Fort Pinter and reunite with Gunther. Gunther? I really don't know. Maybe we'll see you there later. We'll tell James how kind you've been to us. Oh, thank you so much, Helga. Thanks for helping them. What a relief that the horse wasn't hurt. It could have ended really badly. So you're telling me that these holes are everywhere? They'll destroy my crops and they're dangerous for the horses. Imagine what would happen if more horses got stuck. We might we might not be so lucky, lucky next time. I cannot speak. I can't read. <laughs> Someone or something must have dug those holes. They're too large to be made by mice. Search the area and see if you can find anything suspicious. You can sit by the feeding station next to the holes. Report back to me if you see anything. Okay. <laughs> Just okay. Oh, we're peeking. This also doesn't have an animation. I'm like kind of sad about these quests right now. <laughs> peeking apparently takes a very long time. Okay, there we go. We are done. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing at all? Oh no. You think you're too visible out in the open and whatever is making those holes will stay hidden as long as you're there? Maybe you're right. Let's think about how you can watch the field without being seen. I know. Ride up to Mario at the observatory and ask him if you can use the large telescope. Then you can watch the field without anyone knowing you're there. The observatory is in the mountains north of Hollow Woods. The easiest way there is to go along the north side of the forest and then follow the road which starts there. I know exactly where the observatory is, thank you. It's right over here. <laughs> it's so weird not having um, the little sky lift, what's it called? I don't know, the little lifty thing from North Link up to the observatory because I'm like, now I have to ride all the way through the hollow woods. <laughs> 
All right, we have finally made it to the observatory. That probably took me longer than it needed to because I tried to take a shortcut, but it didn't really turn into a shortcut, I don't think. But you know, we are here. Hello, yes, I am Mario. Your name is Cassandra. What a cute name. Cute's not what I would describe it, but okay. <laughs> and what a fantastic horse you have. How brave of you to ride the difficult path up here. Welcome to the Archaeological and Astronomical Society at Jorvik Observatory. The observatory has a giant telescope that we use to look at the stars. Well, I want to look at some fields today. <laughs> oh, wait... Steve wants you to use the telescope to watch his field. I have a really important star to study right now. Can you come back tomorrow? I will have some free time then. Maybe you have something to do in Vaildale until then. <gasps> is it hinting at me to do something in Vaildale? Nothing much is going on in Vaildale. I think I might just stay here with you. We can wish upon a star. It's going to be a beautiful night for stargazing. Would you care to join me, Cassandra? Oh, yes, I would. Oh wow, and suddenly it's evening. <laughs> this is my favorite time of day. That moment just before dusk when the sunlight fades below the horizon to let the starlight shine. The wishing hour, they call it. Do you remember the old poem? Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have this wish I wish tonight. Tell me more, little prince. <gasps> Forgive my interruption, I could not I could not help but overhear you wishing on a star. It so happens that I am collecting wishes tonight as inspiration for my circus of dreams. I would love to hear more about yours. I've always understood that wishes on stars are meant to be kept secret. Balderdash, how can you expect it to come true? It's lucky I showed up when I did. Now Comet Chaser tell all. What is this wish of yours? Out with it. Well, you see... On this island, everyone is so captivated by horses on the ground that they miss the beauty of the night sky. I wish there was a better way to share my love of starlight with the people of Jorvik. A way to share the beauty of starlight with those who love horses. Truly an intriguing enigma. There is but one solution. I must turn, of, I must turn all of Jorvik's horses into constellations that can live in the heavens for eternity. Never to be ridden again. Yes, this is a brilliant dream, little prince. I will make it come true. No! <laughs> hmm, perhaps you're right, Cassandra. With so many new stars, the night sky would get quite crowded. Let us flip this, pro this proposition, then. The luminous starlight of the night sky brought to earth in the coat of a pony. Twinkle, twinkle, little horse. No! Wait, autumn? Um... Not autumn. <laughs> that's that's my main account style horse. I mean, um, oh, what did I name this horse? I literally cannot remember. <gasps> oh, oh, it's um, is it Vega? It's Vega. This is Arctic Orb. What did I name this horse? It's an animal. Orca. Is it Orca? Oh my god, I can't remember. I swear. <gasps> Another wish granted. This is actually a really pretty pony and I think this is one of the horses that I want to buy in my little shopping spree. So yeah, that's a little teaser for that one. To further the stargazer's wish, I shall make a place for Vega the Zoni at my Circus of Dreams where all may gaze upon her resplendent twinkling coat. You little dove may have the honor of escorting our sparkling twilight twilight friend to her new home. We have to ride all the way to Norman's Highland. Are you kidding me? Really? Wait. Oh my god, does the pony follow me? Wait. Oh my god, it's following me. This is the cutest thing in the world. This is this is everything that I've ever wanted. I don't remember doing this quest on my main account. Like, I honestly do not remember it. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I like wood trailer, but this is too cute to trailer. Oh my god, I love this horse. I want this horse. We're totally buying Zone and uh, not Zony Vega. You know, I just realized that it would be Oh my god, I can't call for pickup. Well, okay then. I was gonna say it's gonna be quicker if I call for pickup, but I can't do that. So we're riding there. I mean this is too cute to pass up. Oh no, the blue's gone. Oh, that's a fence. The blue is back. <laughs> Just what I do when I'm out, so try. 
right, we have finally made it to the circus. Oh gosh, that kind of scared me. Two zonies, two wishes brought to glorious life. Oh, does that mean, oh my God, what if we have like a whole like herd of zonies? That would be so cute. <laughs> I want more zonies now. Like when they first came out, I didn't really like the zonies, but now I'm like addicted to them. <laughs> Thank you for guiding our new friend to her new home. Should you wish to adopt Vega and spread Mario's dream throughout your Vicky, you need only ask. Until next time, I bid you adio, little dove. And remember, do not let your wishes go unspoken. You never know what miracle workers might be listening. Today, we're in Veildale. And um, we're here because someone had a quest for us in Veildale. And we're also going to go back to Mario who is uh, examining Steve's field or something for what's well, creating the holes in the ground. So yeah, let's um, start with a smaller quest, I guess. New to Veildale Heart, this place is not exactly a metropolis, but at least we've got a stable. It's over there. You should go take a look. Nice to meet you, by the way. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you too, Sophie. I mean, she never told us her name, but like, that's cool. <laughs> to be fair, we didn't tell her ours either. Hi there, Claire's the name. You feel like working? In that case, you've come to the right place. Take a look at the notice board to see what I need help with. I hope you enjoy yourself while in Veildale. This village may be small, but it has lots of personality. So I feel like if I, um, yeah, join Veildale, like we'll meet Elizabeth and stuff. I don't know. I feel like doing quests around Veildale might build up the main story and also... I think it's just cool to do um, the side quests as well, especially with you guys, because someone's gone through and written these quests, so we might as well read them and appreciate them. <laughs> is there a riding track here? Sure there is. We have an excellent cross-country trail here in Veildale. It's up at Veildale Lake to the east and is looked after by Mr. Anderson, the gamekeeper. Okay, so I guess we're going up to Veildale Lake. Well, hello there, little lady. Have you come to use the trail? I'm glad. Makes me feel like someone appreciates my work here. Haha, ha, go ahead. Go on and ride carefully. It's tricky. What's the horse's name? Run like the wind, Arctic Orb. I will try. I mean, I take very good care of him, as you can see by his um, red face. <laughs> Everyone always keep falling in love again The fuck's wrong with them? I don't understand Maybe it will pass by someone say me For a pass out, I'm too lonely To be done, I'm a drink at this page Hey, we got a bronze, that isn't that bad <laughs> Those are four impressive horse legs, girl. I'm very impressed that you could ride the track so well. Thank you so much, Mr. Anderson. I just saw a star back here underneath this little bridgey thing, so we're just gonna grab that. There we go, we found a star. How many stars have we found? We found eight stars. Okay, I thought we'd have found like one. So I guess I'm gonna ride back to Veildale and we're gonna go probably talk to Mario now. We're gonna stop the small chat. We've kind of warmed ourselves up a bit and we're gonna go do some big quests. <laughs> oh damn, we just missed a championship. We just missed the- oh, we don't even have Golden Hill so we couldn't even go to it. <laughs> Oh wait, no, that's my time. What's the time in the server? 8 o'clock. So we missed New Hill Crest. Oh, we don't have that anyways. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alright, we are here with Mario. Um, a very busy stargazer, I think it is. Okay, tell me what you want. So Steve thought that you could use the telescope to see who is digging the holes on his field. That's completely nuts, but I do want to help you. I'm very busy watching the sky as I've received some reports about mysterious light phenomena phenomena <laughs> but i haven't seen any yet i've been so busy with this that i haven't had time to eat tell you what if you can ride down to claire in veildale and get some cupcakes for me i'll let you use the telescope while i'm eating are you kidding me i just came from veildale now i have to ride all the way back and it takes me forever on this slow horse
finally we have made it back to Claire. Hello. Hi Cassandra, nice to see you again. Oh, you're here to get some cupcakes for my for Mario. Haha, <laughs> he is so obsessed with the stars that he forgets to eat. Please take these cupcakes to Mario at the observatory. See you again soon. Sure thing. I have to go all the way back to the observatory. <laughs> Lots of riding back and forth today, I guess. Things but letting go just comes easy to you. Alright, I'm back with your cupcakes, Mario. All the way back. Amazing, you're an angel. Yum, yum. Ah, uh, this one. You can borrow the telescope while I'm eating. I have adjusted it for you so it's ready to use. I hope you can find out who or what is digging up Steve's field. So now we get to go inside, which is kind of exciting, I guess. <laughs> Um, oh gosh, there we go. Let's watch these holds very intently. This, is this the right direction? I guess it is. Yeah, oh gosh. <laughs> I thought the telescope was facing the other direction, but maybe it's not. There's a chipmunk looking thing. I forget what it is. Already done. What did you see? Oh, chipmunks. It won't be easy getting rid of those. I've heard they're persistent little r rascals. They dig like bulldozers and have destroyed a lot of my archaeological sites over the years. You have to go back to Steve and tell him that you have identified the culprits. I'll keep looking for anything I inexplicable in the sky. Say hello to Steve from me and good luck with the chipmunks. Thank you, Mario. To me, it sounds like we probably need the luck right now. I know that I'm obvious, fuck it, I made this way But why didn't I stay when I had the chance? Maybe it will pass by, someone save me For a pass out, I'm too lonely To be done in my drink at this pace I just wanted to say that if I sound like really tired it's because I am, and if I'm really quiet, it's because it is currently 10.15pm, and um, I do have a family, and I should probably not be filming a video right now, but I am, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the silver glade music makes me so happy for some reason, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh dear, chipmunks, first mice and now chipmunks digging up my fields and threatening the harvest, people and horses. They're very clever little creatures but very shy as you notice considering you had to use a telescope to see them. The vet in Silverglade Village may have some good advice, I don't want to hurt them, they're so cute but they have to go. Right over to the vet and ask for some advice. Alright, let's go to the vet. Which entrance is best for this? <laughs> Considering that it's 8 o'clock, there's actually a lot less people here than I thought there would be, like There is no one online right now. Am I just on a, like a really quiet server? I don't even know what server I'm on Hello Cassandra chipmunks you say? I'd love to help I think that the best approach is to befriend the chipmunks. Yes, befriend them. They love cabbage. If you put cabbage in the holes, I guarantee that they will love you. After that, you can build a place where they are allowed to dig. You can then put up signs to warn people about the holes. And uh, if you give the chipmunks some cabbage now, then they'll stay there. They also like to take baths because they get so dirty when they dig. Tell Steve about this. Back and forth, back and forth. I'm... <laughs> Oh my god, there's a person. A wild person. There's another wild person. Oh, and her outfit's really cute. I like her outfit. It's very nice. Befriend the chipmunks. We've come to terms with the mice now, so why not the chipmunks? Hmm, this place is turning into a zoo. Oh, and it's another timer quest. Are you kidding me? Well, okay. I guess we'll go do a quest inside of Silverglade, maybe. Let's talk to... Is it Harold? Maybe it's Harold. No, it's Daxton, okay. Cassandra, how are you? Now that you're here, perhaps you could do me a favor. After this harsh winter, I need to make a lot of warm jackets for people. You see, I'm out of wool at the moment, and as a tailor, I rely on wool to make fabric and thread to make clothes. 
You should be able to get some more wool from the shepherd, Landon. Please run this errand for me, will you? Of course I can. Um, which way is the sheep? I think it's this way. Oh gosh. Oh, ow. Mm, yeah, okay. Here he is. Okay. Well, hello. What? You've come for wool? Oh, I'm afraid I will have to disappoint you. I haven't had time to shear the sheep yet. I've been too busy watching over them. I'm awfully afraid they'll run away, you see. And that would be such a tragedy, don't you think? I couldn't stand losing another one of them. Ooh, another one. <laughs> If it's very important, I could of course lend you some sheep shears so you can shear the wool yourself. Would that work for you? I guess it would. Yes, you are a feisty young lady, I must say. Here you go then. Take these sheep shears and cut off as much wool as you want. Um, okay, thanks I guess. Do I have to shear all of them? How many do I have to shear? Oh, there's no animation. <laughs> Nice work. Perhaps you could consider becoming a sheep farmer yourself someday. I work for the Baroness of Silverglade. Do you know her? No? Um, actually I do, but okay. Um, I guess you'll meet her soon and probably start working for her like everybody else around here. I do know her, but okay. Say hello to Daxton for me, will you? Now I've got to get back to watching the sheep. One almost got away just now. Okay, well you have fun with that, Landon. Ow, what the heck did I even hear? I don't even know, but okay. We are getting so close to level 10 and I'm kind of excited because like I then get to buy new horses and that's just going to be really cool. <laughs> what is wrong with the sun? The sun is like purple. Um, that's a, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> oh, I'm writing to Steve. Where am I going? Hey, Daxton. Beautiful. Looks like this wool has been cut off by a true professional and the sheep look great. Um, thank you. I did it myself. <laughs> Hello, Cassandra. I'd like to thank you since you've been so kind and brought me wool every day. If you could get some dye for my wool, I can give you a nice writing waistcoat as a thank you. Can you do that for me? Of course I can. Um, I've brought you wool like only today, but that's okay. Great, I'll be happy to make you a nice waistcoat. To make this waistcoat, I need dye for the wool. I need blue, pink, red, green, and purple. I've heard about some special flowers growing in Veildale. They contain a lot of pink pigment with a unique luster. Ask Avalon in Veildale Village to help you. Alright, let's go to Veildale again, I guess. I think I'm just going to trailer there because I'm starting to get annoyed of um, riding on a slow horse to Veildale. Like, don't get me wrong. I love it. I love riding around Star Stable. It's like just this weird thing where I prefer to ride than take the trailer a lot of the time. But that's just because I'm usually on a fast horse and um, it's not almost 10.30 at night. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Hello Cassandra, can I extract pink flower, pink, <laughs> pink colour from the flowers of Aideen? Of course, the flowers have a lot of special qualities, but I only want you to pick the ones that are withered. It won't affect the colour pigment and we preserve the protected fresh flowers. I need eight withered flowers to make this dye. Look around in the forest and you'll find them soon enough. You can only pick the withered ones. This flower is protected and the pigment is still good even if the flower is withered. Okay, you've said that before but that's fine. Just drill it into my head. Don't pick the fresh ones. Pick the withered ones. So are all the ones that is going to glow withered or am I going to somehow fail this? <laughs> Um, does this look withered? Sure. I think they are, they are all just withered, if I could speak. Yeah, because this one's not glowing, so it's all like pretty and stuff. Why can I like remember doing this? Oh my gosh. I know the um, waistcoat thing that we're making and it's like, I've never worn it, but maybe we should make an outfit with it. Oh, I spot a star. 
Oh, our ninth star of the series, how exciting. There we go, back to um, Avalon, I guess. Thanks for the flowers, now I can make the dye for you. It'll take a while, so come back tomorrow when it's ready. Oh, okay, apparently it's tomorrow. <laughs> Hello Cassandra, the die is ready. Take it to the tailor. I hope he'll be pleased. I feel like Star Stable's messed up somewhere in the code or like they've changed the quest line and forgot to change like the speech bubbles. But um, yeah, I'm not like waiting days for these quests because I'm pretty sure you had to like wait a day and get a certain amount of wool and then wait a day for each day of the die. But maybe it's changed or it's just glitching. Thank you so much, Cassandra. I can see that this dye is of the highest quality. This will make a nice color for your waistcoat. Why are you doing this, Daxton? Like, I don't understand. Just because we gave you wool. All right, so I think that I'm going to actually end the episode here. Um, I think we're just going to come back to Daxton the tailor and continue his little quest. Because we still don't have any main quests, and I don't know if I'm doing the wrong quests to get more main quests. But um, I think... I think we'll just have to work through all of these quests eventually, so we might as well, you know, start right here with Daxton. Now I need some blue dye for the wool. I know there's a special blue stone in Jorvik which I think would be perfect as pigment for the blue colour I had in mind. Conrad, the blacksmith, knows a lot about stones and minerals. Talk to him. Alright then, Daxton, I will. I don't know why I'm liking his name tonight. Ow, okay, we cannot ride, but that's a me problem. This isn't even the direction that I want to go. Okay, we want to go this direction. Oh my gosh. Steve's farm empty. I could... It could... Uh, Hi, Cassandra. Have I heard of a blue stone? Sure I have. It's called Lapis Lazuli, and it's very rare here in Jorvik. Haha, <laughs> reminds me of Minecraft. <laughs> The Jorvik Lapis Lazuli is a rare and beautiful blue stone. To find it, you need to search long and hard, but I found a place nearby where I sometimes find a few of them. Right up to the western part of Noma's Highland, you know, the area to the west of the abandoned farm where I think you used to compete with the Bobcat Girls. Right to the rocky knolls to the far west of that area. If you're lucky, you will find some Lapis Lazuli. <laughs> Lapis Lazuli there. Come back to me when you found three stones. Oh my gosh, this is the blue stone that I talked about once up in Nilma's Highland. And I was like, I don't remember this. This must be part of a quest. And here we are. You can borrow my pickaxe to break off the pieces. Thank you so much, Conrad. That would be very helpful. Here we go. Here's some blue stones over here. We have two of them, but we need three, I think he said. I don't know. I have a bad memory. One Lapis Lazuli two lapis is it I, s I feel like i said lapis but it's more like la lapis lapis lazuli and there's one over here i don't know why i got on my horse again like i feel like my horse is so slow that it'll be easier if i just like didn't um get on my horse again but you know we did Oh my gosh, I swear, my cat is meowing, but I let him in my room. Like, I do everything for that cat. I made my bed, like, perfectly neatly, new sheets, and that's usually when he gets to sleep on the bed because he likes it like that, but he didn't sleep on the bed. And I took him on a walk, and I give him everything, and now he wants to come inside just after I let him out. Oh my gosh. I have the lapis, I have the lapis. Hello. Oh, you found a really nice specimen specimen of lapis lazuli. Now we have to turn this into dye by grinding it into a powder. Come back tomorrow, it'll be ready then. Oh, okay, so now it's giving me a time quest. Remember in the last part where they were like, come back tomorrow, and then it would just like, let me do it straight away? Yeah, I guess it's been fixed now. <laughs> So I guess we're already here in Moorland, so we might go like grind um, some quests at Moorland. All right, who can we talk to? We can talk to Maya again. Oh, and she's sleeping, of course. Ah, it's a mega catastrophe. Lynx has disappeared. Lynx seemed unsure about his new shoes, so I left him un. Oh, I left. I thought he said I left him unhitched. I was like, oh Maya, you think you ran away? So I left him hitched outside for a while to relax. But then one of the stable hands needed my help with something and I swear I couldn't have been away for more than a minute, but then he disappeared. Gone without a trace. How did he unhitch himself? What are the secret powers is this mischievous pony hiding? Ugh. 
How am I going to find him? He could be halfway to Fort Pinter by now. What do I tell Thomas? Hey, boss, just so you know, I've lost a new horse. No, I can't say that. Seriously, he'd never let me work with the horses again. What? You would help me find him? You would help me find him? You're a lifesaver. Let's start by asking him around. Someone must have seen something. We'll split up and I'll meet you back here. Good luck. Well, thank you. Um, I was gonna like go, let's ask Thomas to see if he's seen anything. He's like, hey Thomas, have you seen the loose pony? Um, sorry, but I haven't seen anything. I feel like then we have to go ask the other direction if they haven't seen anything. Um, sorry, but I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I think we have to ride in the opposite direction if she hasn't seen anything. If that makes any sense. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I haven't seen anything. Oh, damn. I feel like we uh, don't have a lot of luck right now, you know? <laughs> what are you asking me for? Where would I know where Lynx is? Well, you had a sparkly thing around you. Thought maybe you knew something. Well, I guess we're asking Loretta anyways. I don't think it mattered who we asked, actually. So, um, I just wasted time, but that's fine. It's- I'm totally cool with that. Okay, so nobody saw- nobody? Nobody saw anything? Not exactly helpful. What do we do now? Nobody seems to have seen anything. How can you not notice a runaway horse? Oh well, I suppose I missed it, but seriously though, someone should have seen him. You have an idea, you say? That's great, Cassandra. Can't believe I didn't think of it myself. Let's see if we can find Lynx's hoof prints. Oh my gosh. Since he's got new shoes, his track should look different from all the others around here. Okay, we can do that. Why is this girl just chilling? Okay, that's cool. Um, hoof prints, hoof prints, hoof prints. Oh, we found hoof prints. Okay. You find hoof prints on the ground. They seem different from the others. Could they belong to Lynx? You're not completely sure, but following the tracks, it feels like it's worth a try. Like Maya said, they differ from the others. All right, let's go. I mean, I can't see them, but that's fine. It's actually so satisfying to hear like the little collecty sound as you ride through the sparkles. Like, is that just me? And for some reason, I just got like a hit of nostalgia. Oh my gosh, why did that even happen? I don't know, but I feel nostalgia now. <laughs> Hey, look, I found him. Oh, he's- wait, is the leg always like that or are we gonna be told that he is hurt? You found Lynx. He stares at you and doesn't look particularly interested in following you back. Well, that doesn't seem good. Just as everyone says, Lynx seems like a stubborn, cheeky, and lively horse. No way is a little bit of sugar going to lure him back. What are you going to do? His eyes meet yours and you suddenly realize, to get Lynx back to the stable, you need to challenge him to a race. A horse like Lynx loves competition and would never back down from a chance to win. You and Arctic Orb start to limber up. Who's the fastest? You and Arctic Orb or Lynx? Who can get back to the stable first? Lynx snorts eagerly. He's ready for the challenge. But are you? Oh, we get black shoes. Okay, I can do this. Okay, let's go. Oh, damn, my horse is so slow at taking off. Please, come on, Orca gotta get quick fast okay who put out the barrels though like <laughs> that doesn't make sense no Lynx is gonna beat us also are these like old plants like they look like old style plants to me maybe they aren't maybe I'm just going crazy they just look like a different green you know so yeah damn this horse is fast also how did Jorvik like how did the stable suddenly become so overgrown I don't understand <gasps> Did we beat the horse? No. Oh my gosh, we were so close. We were so close. <sighs> <laughs> wow, that was fast. I felt the breeze whoosh past when you flew through the gate. Through the gates. Thanks for finding Lynx and bringing him back. Now I just need to make sure I keep an eye on him. As a thanks for all your help, you can have this little present that Thomas gave me for looking after Lynx. It's okay. You deserve it more. Now I need to get back to my stable chores. I'll see you and Arctic Orb around the stables, Cassandra. Okay, awesome. So we've done a quest with Maya and we've got some cool shoes. I feel like I don't usually wear these because I feel like they look a little strange. Like, I don't know, just I don't know why. I just feel like they look strange. So let's do the quest with Tan now, I guess. 
I've been saving for a long time to buy new riding clothes and now all my money is gone. I must have lost it. It has to be somewhere nearby. Can you help me look for it, please? Of course I can. I can only think of three places the money could be. One is in the paddock next to me, near the hay. Or maybe I lost it during lunch. I sat at the pier down by the water, south of Miss Holdsworth House. On the way back, I visited Miss Holdsworth and may have lost it by the benches in her cherry tree orchard. Alright, so um, I guess we have to go look in all, the, all of those three places. So, um, in the paddock. I reckon it's going to be at Miss Holdsworth or something because... That's the one that she went most like into detail about and that's also the furthest away so of course Star Stable would do that to me. <laughs> or maybe we won't find the money at all. You found nothing of interest. Okay, that's the tea. Maybe she was robbed. Yeah, okay, so the money is definitely lost. Um, that's not very good. <laughs> you didn't find it? Typical. But thanks anyway. How could I be so careless? I'll have to have a think of any other places I visited recently. I was at the blacksmith's, you know, Conrad. I may have lost my money on the way back when I was riding a bit faster. Look along the road towards Conrad, the blacksmith. His forge is to the north. I was riding along the racetrack to start there. Uh, so start there, please. After that, you can talk to Conrad to see if he's found any lost money. Okay. I can do that. I love how she's giving me Jorvik shillings for trying to find her money. Like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, I'm not complaining though. I can use all the Jorvik shillings I can get. Good day, Cassandra. Oh, Tan lost her money. That's sad. I haven't seen or heard anything here. I'm afraid you'll have to go back and tell her that. Oh, damn. Okay. I've been thinking some more and I remember that I was in Silverglade Village. Could you help me look there? It would be really kind of you. I was at the post office to pick up a package. After that, I talked to the vet and finally I got some water from the well inside the village. You're making me ride to Silverglade? Okay. Also, I just saw Tan's makeover and I got a little jealous because we look a little crusty. So like, I'm really excited for Star Stable to update our characters, so I cannot wait for that update. I think they're going to do a really good job, so yeah. <laughs> Alright, so it doesn't seem to be here in Silverglade Village. I think we then have to go back and talk to her again. So um, let's go and um, not- oh gosh, oh gosh, yeah, that's- um, yeah, I'm like kind of struggling. I'm sure it's fine. There we go. We're like free-ish. Yeah, okay, I'm good now. <laughs> what? No money in the village? Oh, I'm such a klutz. Where else did I go? Yes, I remember going to the lighthouse, you know, the large green and white lighthouse east of Moorland, south of Jasper's Barn. I was there and checked out the view. That's where the money must be. Will you be a darling and ride there and look? I think you'll have to search all around the lighthouse. Well, okay. I mean, it's tied with the last place you look, so um, we must find the money there. And if we don't, then um, Tan can just make the money again. Like, I feel like it's probably not that much money she's lost. Like, actually, no. Riding clothes is quite expensive to my knowledge, so. But why is she carrying around that much money with her, though? Like, I wouldn't carry that around with me until I'm going to the shops or something. <laughs> Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? It wasn't even there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Not there? But that's the last place I can think of. What if What if it was stolen? That's what I've been saying this entire time and it's a time quest. Okay, what, what's the time frames we are at right now? I think that we can go do maybe a quest with Mrs. Goldsworth, Hold, Goldsworth? Holdsworth. <laughs> and um, it will either be a bit of a longer episode or maybe it won't be. I don't know. I can't tell until I'm editing. So hopefully you guys don't mind. So yeah. Well, I prepare the die. You can go talk to Conrad, the blacksmith. I heard that he's made something for you, which he's been working on for a long time. Wait, what die is she working on? I'm confused, but okay. Did we speak to Miss Holdsworth last part? I can't remember now. Okay. 
Alright, Cassandra, you're exactly the person I wanted to see right now. I finally finished the horseshoes I promised you. They look great. Take them and put them on your nice companion arctic orb. Okay, will do. Was that literally all that quest was? Okay, so that was fun. Um, is there anything else that we could maybe do? I guess there's stuff around Fort Pinter, so we might go do some, like, mini quest things over there. And then we'll finish off the par and um, probably get to level 10 in a live stream. And um, in the next episode, uh, we might not have a next episode, actually. We might do a shopping spree for the next Back to the Beginning day. So hopefully that will be on Friday. So that means I'm just trying to, like, figure stuff out. But um, we might do the live stream on thursday wednesday or thursday i reckon so that i have time to plan tomorrow oh i could just no no because this video goes out tomorrow afternoon okay so i will probably stream on wednesday morning actually we might stream then so that will be fun and hopefully i'll see you guys there so um i'll set up a little pre um stream thing for you guys to go um, set reminders and stuff um, Maybe as this video goes out so check out the the uh, What's the word the uh, pinned comment in the comment section below and you will see a live stream that is set up for um, probably like 15 hours from now. I don't really know <laughs> Let's just talk to Ferdinand. I'm Ferdinand and this is my wife Eddie and this is our horse market. For years we've roamed across Jorvik with our caravan, looking to connect riders like yourself with the perfect horse and quality attack. Baroness Silverglade agreed to let us set up camp on a more permanent basis here by the sea. After so many years on the road, we're looking forward to putting down roots. You put down you put down roots, I'll believe it when I see it. We talked about this, Eddie. It's what we've always wanted, a place to call home. And no more seasick horses. I won't miss that. Every stable and village on this island has special horses you can't find anywhere else. But you'll find no wider selection of healthy, happy horses than here at Ferdinand's Horse Market. You might be thinking, Ferdinand, are the... Are these all the horses you have on offer? I thought you had the best selection in all of Jorvik. Well, I'll have you know that the horses you see are just a taste of what we have for sale. What do you think, Cassandra? Would you like to see more horses? Oh, of course. Do you even have to ask, Ferdinand? This is Jorvik. Of course our friend wants to see more horses. This is like a great, like, commercial. We could make this into a commercial. I know that, just being polite. To swap out the horses on display, just use the shuffleboard over there. Oh look, here comes another customer. Hang in there, Cassandra. I'm holding on. Excuse me, Ferdinand, are these the only horses you have? I heard you had the best selection in all of Jorvik. Funny you should ask, Cassandra here was just about to demonstrate how to bring up more horses with the shuffleboard. <gasps> oh, he groan. Ugh. <laughs> Go ahead, Cassandra. Use the shuffleboard and call out new horses for our new customer. Honestly, I feel like I'm in a commercial. <laughs> oh my gosh, poof! There's more beautiful horses. Oh, she is surprised. Damn. <laughs> Whoa, so many horses. We're just getting started. Cassandra, would you take us for another whirl with the shuffleboard? Oh my gosh, how many times do I have to do this? <laughs> Arabians. Ooh. Oh, she's very happy. Whoa, I love them all. More, more, more. One more time for good measure. There better be quarter horses in this batch. If there's no quarter horses, then I'm gonna be mad. I want to see some quarter horses. <gasps> no! Oh. oh gosh, she does not look okay. Um, is she alright? Wow, too many horses. Oh, oh gosh. A common reaction. Eddie, could you bring her a cup of tea? Um, Ferdinand? I think if we're doing this as a commercial, you should probably keep the negative stuff out. <gasps> 
Oh my gosh, you guys. You guys, look, you can see inside of the caravan. It's so cute in there. Oh, we can basically go inside. Oh my gosh, it's so cute in here. I want to sit in here. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, um... That is cute. What the heck? Now I want my own like apartment more than ever. <laughs> Thank you for assistance in demoing the shuffleboard. Feel free to use it whenever you feel like browsing the horses here at the market. We believe every horse deserves a good home. Go ahead, browse your heart content. Maybe you'll find the next companion for your stable. Well, um, I think that was a fun quest to kind of finish it off. Like, I feel like the people who wrote that made something that could have been boring, I guess. Very fun and entertaining, and I had a lot of fun reading it, so you know. <gasps> My backpack is full! What? To the south. I don't even know where the south is, but okay. One, two, three, four, five. Right, we are here at the manor. Let's get this questing on the way with Linda. Hi Cassandra, it's been a while. I've got so much catching up to do after being away for so long. What's that? Have I heard anything from Alex? Yes, in fact I have. She's on her way back and I think she'll be here tomorrow. There are rumours that the druids are organising a council meeting. Did you hear about that? Um, no I did not. Okay, this girl is talking to me. You haven't? Strange. I'm sure they want you to participate in the council. You've helped both both of us and the druids a lot. And I know that the druids, the keepers of Aideen, are watching out for you. So, okay, the girl wanted help, but I'm kind of busy because I have to film this video and then I have to edit it and then film another video and half edit it. I have to edit an Instagram thing today. All before doing an all-nighter tonight. So um, whilst you guys are watching this video, I'm currently going to be staying awake for 12 hours when I shouldn't be and messing up my entire sleep schedule a few days before I go back to school. So that's going to be fun. But back to Linda. Oh no, wait, is it, not a, is it not a main quest anymore? I don't even know why I'm clicking. Okay, so it is. So Alex Returns is a time quest and then we're going to be talking about the circus. We better talk with Alex when she arrives tomorrow and then we'll know whether there'll be a council meeting or not. But guess what? I hear that a circus is coming to Moorland. Maybe you could check out in the- check that out in the meantime. It was Maya in Moorland who told me. Ask her about the details and where the circus is. Take a look and check if anything hmm, mysterious is going on there. I have my suspicions. So agreed, you'll check with Maya where the circus is, and then we'll meet back here tomorrow when Alex is back. Great. Alright, here, let's go to Moorland. I'm a go I'm a call for pickup. <laughs> Alright, we appeared right next to Maya who is sleeping. That's cool. Cassandra, hi. Do do we miss you here in Moorland? Don't worry, Cassandra. We have lots to do, but there are loads of newcomers here to help, so feel free to help Linda and the others as soon as you find Justin. I'm sure that's what Thomas wants most of all right now. The circus? So Linda told you I saw a circus? That's right. Have you seen the wizard carriage up on Nilmer's Highland, west of the abandoned farm? I have, actually. We helped him out a bit. It actually looks like they are setting up a full circus there. I don't know what they're doing, but I've seen some people who are doing something. Take a look up on Nilma's Highland, Cassandra. Okay, I mean, we did kind of help him, so he better not be doing any mischievous stuff up there, because we helped him with it. What do we have here? A tiny horse and her human rider. May I ask who you are and what you have done with my jester? Yidris, I helped you, man. I helped you set up the tent. How do you not remember me? I am the great Yidris. I come to tell you with my extraordinary carnival and will offer you wonders you have never seen before. Did I read that wrong? I can't even remember. Is the circus coming to town? Hee hee, that's one way of putting it. I'm setting up my carnival here on the hill. It will be something extraordinary. You'll see. We'll have strange and funny people doing strange and wonderful things. We shall perform magic like you have never seen like you have never ever seen before. I bring true miracles. But now over to more important things. You know nothing about the jester. Okay. He took off. 
Can you help me find him? He gets lost easily, the silly little fool. I heard his bells ringing down the hill here to the south. Maybe he's out there wandering about to the south. I don't even know where the south is, but okay. Oh, I know where he is because I've passed him a few times. He's like literally just over here, isn't he? Yeah, okay. Ouch, what's this? One four-legged and one two-legged? That's six legs altogether. Six thick thistle sticks. So you must be both horse and rider then. Yes? Um, yes? <laughs> you think I'm weird? I think you're weird. Did Mr. Yidris and the Great send you? Well, then I'll gladly follow you back to him. I am, as you can see, very lost. I think I'm a little stupid, you see. Mr. Yidris says I am, and he's always right. At least, so he says. I can't read today, I'm so sorry. Wait, don't ride too fast or I won't be able to keep up. As you can see, I have very short legs. Look at him run. Look at him like run. I broke him. He's sliding, oh my gosh, I broke him. I broke him. Oh, there we go. I found your jester. He's right here. Good work, horsewoman. I hope the little jester didn't bore you too much on the way. He only talks gibberish anyway. What's your name? Cassandra? Neat. Thank you so much for helping me find the jester. Do you like animals? Maybe funny circus animals? Look in the cages and tell me what you think about them. Okay, where? what are we doing and where is this going? What the heck? Okay, we have nothing, nothing and nothing. We found, yeah, inspecting something empty. Yeah, they're very empty. Empty? You're kidding me. You don't see any animals at all in the cages? Hmm, interesting. Thanks anyways. I promise you'll see them another day. Maybe you can even have one to take home with you, but you can't get any just now since you can't even see them. That would seem strange. Well, Cassandra, the jester was searching for five-leaf clovers for me when he got lost. He can't even handle a simple task like that. I'm convinced that you're much better at that at it than him. <laughs> I cannot see them myself. Something about my eyes. There are a lot of things only I can see and no one else, but five leaf clovers elude me. To some, five leaf clovers are easy to find if you just put your mind to it. I think you're one of those people. Just close your eyes and count to five. When you open your eyes again, you'll see five leaf clovers all around the place. One, two, three, four, five okay so can i like see the five leaf clovers now i can oh my gosh wow oh incredible cassandra completely incredible you're not so bad at performing miracles yourself you know why thank you i think well, that small matter is taken care of, but actually they're not for me. Or yes, I put one of them in my hat. Isn't it nice? Anyways, there is a lovely lady who should have these. She's waiting by the gate in Cliffside County, north of the riding arena. Maybe you and your fast horse could deliver them to her. Um, so basically outside of Golden Leaf? Yeah, okay. Do you have a you have a trailer here, don't you? Yeah, you do. I'm trailing to the riding hall. <laughs> I haven't unlocked the riding hall. That means I just have to go to Silvergrade Manor and we'll ride down from there. I'm really confused. Are we unlocking Golden Hills right now or no? Because I thought that level 10 was too early to unlock Golden Hills, but now I'm not sure. Oh gosh, what are these? Oh, hedgehogs. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, it's Pi. We're talking to Pi. <gasps> Why are we talking to Pi? Oh my god, wait, I remember this quest. Okay, I'm not gonna spoil anything. Tee hee hee, little girl. I don't think you realize what you've just done. And that's for the best, trust me. But thanks, see you again. Ha ha ha. Time to go, I have lots to prepare. <gasps> no. Bye bye, little girl, I don't need you anymore. For now, ha ha ha. <gasps> Ride to Linda, oh my gosh. So we're not unlocking Golden Hills, but I think we're unlocking it soon. Since we've now talked to Pi, and as you guys can see, she does live in there. Oh, that's the tea, you guys. Oh my gosh, I remember this quest. 
and she's leaving. We have little hedgehogs here. What do the little hedgehogs want? I mean, are they hedgehogs? I don't even know, but we're not gonna talk to them right now. We're gonna go back to Linda and finish off this quest. I'm sorry, it's kind of dark in the game right now. It's because I'm playing it at 11.30 a.m. for me, which means it's like 10.30 p.m. on the server. No, wait, 9.30? 9.30. So, um, yeah, sorry about that, you guys. No, 8.30. It's 8.30. Oh my gosh, okay. I know my 24-hour time. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, look, I have a friend on this server. What? So there was a circus there, or carnival, as Idris called it. They were a bit strange, and you had to help him find five-leaf clover. Five-leaf clovers for a witch. That doesn't sound too good. Five-leaf clovers are extremely rare and can only be found by very special people, and when they are given away, they gain additional magical properties. There's nothing to do about that now. There are lots of strange characters around here these days. It's quite unusual for witches and wizards to show themselves in public. Oh no, and now we have a timer quest again. Okay, let's talk to the little hedgehogs. I think they're hedgehogs, like I'm really not sure. Sniff, sniff. Does the hedgehog, oh, they were, I was right, they're hedgehogs, okay. Sniff, is that all they wanted? Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, I thought there would be something more to it, but no, they're literally just sniffing, okay. So I'm pretty sure now that we are level 10, isn't that when we unlock Farrah's workshop? Like, I think it might be. So we're gonna go ahead and go to Farrah's workshop. Oh, the trailer's not here. How do you unlock the trailer at the riding hall? Oh, the ears, like, kind of match our outfit. I'm gonna wear the ears. I wish that we could wear the ears and our glasses, but you know, we can't, so there's nothing much more I can say about that. I'm really hoping that it's Farah we have to talk to here, because I can't remember. Yes, it is. Okay, we've unlocked Farah. So you unlock Farah at level 10, and I've already done a video on all of the quests here where I've read them out. But um, I'm going to read them out again, and in editing, I guess I'll decide if um, I have enough time to include it but if you guys want to see my first video on Farah's workshop then you can go and check it out. So we are now helping Farah find some chamomile for the tea. So chamomile is located in the hollow woods and also Greendale and just some other places kind of around those areas and um, I do have some videos on how to find the plants but if you want a more updated concise video then I can make another one with all the information that you need to know about foraging and all of my tips and tricks so if you want to see that then just let me know in the comments below and I will gladly make one these flowers will do nicely hang on to those you'll need them next all right, so now we're uh, we're now going down to the crafting tables down here. Oh my gosh, and there's another horseshoe. And um, we get to make some tea. So we're currently building up the little the little table things. And let me say they look so like pretty and aesthetic and stuff. Like I don't know, they're just really pretty. Tea has been made. Look at us hold up our glowing orb of pink. But that is that is tea. And now we are going to collect the task from the message board, the order board up here. We're going to collect um, Avalon's request for herbal tea right here. And then we're going to ride over to Avalon and give him the tea in his little order letterbox thingamajiggy. Right here, there we go. Congratulations on completing your first order. Foraging, crafting, and delivery. You have the skills to help this workshop grow. And now it is just reputation. So every day you guys can see we have these things here and we have to work towards them. But I have been filming it for quite a while now. All right, Linda, I'm here and I can see that Alex is here as well. Welcome back, Alex. Hi there, great news. As you can see, Alex is back. Oh, we get to talk to Alex. Okay. Nice to see you again, friends. It's been a long journey and unfortunately quite unsuccessful. Both Lisa and... 
and Anne have been travelling the world. Lisa toured with her rock band playing live all over the world. But people say that some time ago when the tour was over, she returned to Yorvik Stables, picked up Starstrain and rode off. Since then, no one has seen or heard from her again. We believe that she is somewhere here on Yorvik. Ooh, uh, are we finding Lisa? This is cool. Anne was a successful dressage competitor until she vanished one day during a competition in France. There's not a single clue as to where she went. She just disappeared without a trace. This was several months ago and not a word has been heard from her since. Now, I know that when I said we're finding Anne, like we're not going to find it today, but like this is our little, you know, dip into the water of what soul riding adventures are to come. Right now, we should concentrate our efforts on finding Lisa. Since we, since she was last seen here in Jorvik, sh we should be able to pick up her trail. If we can find Lisa, we will be, we will be in a better position to go after Justin. I was gonna say that I'm like doing an okay job at speaking tonight, but I guess I'm still not. That is fine. The Druids, the Keepers of Aideen, have called a council meeting. They've announced that they want you to attend Cassandra. My knowledge is limited. I don't know how you can get there, as it is a very special place. Linda and I will get there by our own means, but you should speak with Elizabeth in Veildale. She has the ability to transfer outsiders to the secret stone circle where the meeting will take place. Alright, so we are off to Veildale, off to Elizabeth. Alright, we are back in Veildale. We didn't have to stay away for very long, but we have to speak to Elizabeth who lives right up here in this gorgeous little cottage up here. Super cute. Hello, Elizabeth. It's great that you could come. I'll teach you how to get to the Druids meeting without having the special skills of the Druids or Soul Riders. The path behind my house leads to the four rune stones. Continue past them. There you'll find a spiral shaped path surrounded by other rune stones. Be sure to ride in a clockwise spiral along the path until the portal opens in the middle. Ride into the portal and you'll travel to the secret stone circle and meet the Druid council there. Listen to the council. Ask your questions and talk to me back here again when the meeting is over. Don't reveal how to get there to anyone. Promise me. I pinky swear, Elizabeth. I pinky swear. So we have to go up here behind her house, up the little hill, past this circle of druid stones which we lit up in a previous episode, to this little spiral looking thing and basically you just have to ride around it. And uh, it activates something in the center, so let's- oh gosh, we're going a bit wide. We can see it starting in the center, there's a little bit of red whirlpool-looking things, spirals, I guess. We just have to- there we go, we've opened up the portal, so now we just have to finish it off and- <gasps> Time and space merge. Everything is calm, always in motion, loading. Ooh, how exciting. First time in the secret stone circle. <gasps> Everyone seems to be here. I mean, there's a lot of people here. Oh, the music, the music, my heart. Oh, the music. A secret and mystic place only for the keepers of Aideen. Ooh. Fripp, hello. We are the keepers of Aideen. We greet you, newcomer. I am Fripp. Druids and soul riders, we are gathered here today for an extra council. A special welcome also to our newcomer. This is Cassandra, and she's the one I told you about. Well done, Honourable Sunbeam. Cassandra, it's so sad that we have to meet under these circumstances, when time is short and the cold fingers of darkness reach for us. But we couldn't have summoned you if it wasn't important. But we wouldn't, sorry. We wouldn't have summoned you if it wasn't important. I'm sorry, I can read. I'm trying my hardest. <laughs> She's not ready. She's too inexperienced. As far as I know, she doesn't even know how to talk to her horse yet, does she? Oh, <gasps> You should know that I was against this from the very beginning. I... Quiet. If we had caught all four of the Soul Riders, we wouldn't need to do this. But Elizabeth Sunbeam guarantees that Cassandra possesses the necessary qualities to be a legendary Soul Rider. Actually, better than anyone in a long time. Tell us, Elizabeth. Thank you, Fripp. I've told you that she passed the test. You know, the first test where you can see which of the four powers you belong to by activating your power's runestone. To keep the secret, I've so far only told Fripp about what really happened. 
Get to the point, Druid. I'm not convinced yet. She activated all four rune stones. <gasps> oh my god, I'm sorry. I just love how they put like a text face. Why do I love that? I don't remember that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Cassandra possesses all four powers. As you all know, it's been more than a hundred years since this has happened. This innocent little girl has the potential to be the strongest soul rider of all in modern times. Maybe the strongest ever. But enough of that. She needs training and experience, but we don't have the luxury of time right now. Mm, we didn't have any training either when we started. True, true. But enough of this, and I presume that no one will question her participation here any further. Good. We have much more important things to talk about, so we have to do the best we can and find time for the training of Cassandra when the opportunity arises. Let's summarize the situation. We know that Jorvik once more is being threatened by the dark by the great darkness, the one called Garnik. Oh the music, you guys, the music. We can tell by the illegal and dark magic which has started haunting the neighborhood in a lot of different ways. Even our perceptive Cassandra has noticed this. That's why it's time to perform the light ceremony, so we can stop Garnik for now. But once more, it's not going to be easy. Alex and Linda are two of the four soul riders we can get hold of. Lisa and Anne have disappeared. Cassandra can probably replace one of them, but we have to continue our search for Lisa or Anne because we need four soul riders for the ceremony. Just like before, the lost book of ceremonies disappeared. Well summarized, Master Fripp. So far, Garnock is not that strong, but we've noticed that there seems to be a lot of strange characters out there who are interested in what we do and they're curious about the dangerous side effects that happen when Garnock gets stronger. We also have to focus on finding and identifying our en enemies before they grow too strong. Well, the time has come. Let's spread the word to war druids in Jorvik, letting them know that it's time for the ceremony once more. The primary goal for all of us is to find at least one of the disappeared soul riders. Let's call a meeting again soon when we have more information to share. Thank you all for coming on such short notice and thank you, Cassandra. I hope you become a member when the time is right. Please stay and ask some questions if you want. We'll try our best to answer them. Ooh. Oh, questions. Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't know if you guys want me to see all the questions. Um, What do we do now? You can return here whenever you want to ask us something. When the time comes, we will assign some tasks for you to perform. You have to be patient and wait until we have the right information, the right training, and a teacher for you. What is the Book of Light Ceremonies? Funny you should ask it back. The book is used at the ceremony to prevent Garnick from going in strength and to temporarily chase him away. Unfortunately, the book has been lost for a couple of hundred years and that's why we call it the Lost Book of Ceremonies. However, a copy of some of the most important chapters has been made and four parts of that copy is divided between us druids. One day we hope to find the book because it will make the ceremony more powerful and it contains secrets written by ancient druids which we have forgotten or don't understand anymore. The last time we acted against Garnick, the circumstances caused our soul riders to act a bit differently. Uh, that's the understatement of the year. What happened to the soul riders? I don't even know. What does Justin have to do with all of this? As you proved, Justin is unfortunately Mr. Sands grandson. It's clear that Mr. Sands has a purpose for him and that, he's so that he has something big going on since he doesn't dare show his ugly face here again. We should invest some time and energy to find the poor boy, not only to save him from Mr. Sands, but also to stop Mr. Sands' plans and maybe find out exactly what they want from Justin. Who are against the droids? Dark Core, controlled by Mr. Sands, is one of our most powerful enemies. Thank goodness you realize that Mr. Sands is back in action on the island again, so we can get ready to act when they show themselves. 
Darkor claims to be a multinational company with the same interests as GED, but we think that Mr. Sands is looking for a way to control Garnick and use that powerful force to take over the world. We don't think that's possible and that the only thing he'll do is ruin our world trying. There are others who want to stop us or have their own agendas regarding Garnock, so be careful out there. We have to identify what they want and what they're doing. There are more stakeholders involved than ever before, and Garnock isn't even that strong yet. <gasps> Ooh, this this feels a little bit scary, you guys. What's this place? The Secret Stone Circle is a place like no other. Time and space work in different ways in here compared to the rest of the world. We, the Keepers of Aideen, have the ability to travel here from different places on Jorvik when we hold council meetings. You can always return to this place and do... To its special nature, you can meet us here again, through the present, but seeing the past, if you know what I mean. I have no idea what you just said, but like, thanks, I guess? What do we know about Lisa and Anne? Sure, I can bring you up to speed on our friend Lisa. After we stopped Mr. Sands the last time and settled back into normal life, Lisa transferred to Star Academy in Jorvik City where she studied music. She had a true gift. Singer, songwriter, guitar, and man, could that girl own the stage. The total package. She started playing at clubs in Jorvik. Linda and I would go to see her when we could. Even Anne showed up sometimes. Then she got a manager and started touring overseas. It all built up to her playing a festival back in Texas where she was born. Everyone was saying Lisa was on the verge of blowing up big time, but then after that show, Lisa went dark. No more shows, no more posting on social media. I read the mean things some people said, that she couldn't take the pressure of fame, but I know that wasn't the truth. Lisa is the bravest girl I've ever known. You think about, you think being a rock star is pressure? Try being a soul writer. I knew she was coming back to Jorvik. I could feel it in my heart and in my birthmark. Herman at Jorvik Stables said she had been by to take her horse Starshine out for rides. This was a few weeks ago. After that, she disappeared without a trace. But we think that she is still somewhere on Jorvik. Linda, care to share what we know about Anne's whereabouts? Our friend Anne is a pretty big deal in the dressage world. In the two years since we came together as the Soul Riders, she and her horse Concord attended more and more competitions, both in Jorvik and abroad. That's how Anne is when she puts her mind to something. She puts her whole heart into it. We were so proud of her. Two months ago, she went to France for a dressage invitation. Invitational, sorry. Uh, during the competition, the announcer called her name, but she never entered the ring. She and Concord just disappeared. Anne's family is very rich. The authorities thought it might have been a kidnapping, but the expected ransom note never came. We suspect that Darkor is behind their disappearance. I'm afraid that's all we know. Oh, okay. Three more questions. What's a soul rider? There are there are always at least four soul riders and they are always special girls who, just like you, have a unique bond to their horses. Horses whose souls are the ones with the islands of Jorvik's true essence. Soul riders are rare nowadays and we have problems finding new ones. We hope that one day you will become a soul rider and help us in the struggle against Garnick and other dark powers who work against us. What can the keepers of Aideen do? We do what we have always done, since the dawn of time. Every time we notice that Garnick is gaining more power, we gather the four soul riders through a ceremony described in the Lost Book of Ceremonies. That ceremony can prevent Garnick from spreading and we can push it back. At least for a while. We can never permanently stop Garnick, but so far we've managed to stop it from poisoning our world with its male malevolence. <laughs> Garnick is unpredictable and can be active once a year or can slumber for decades. During the thousands of years we have existed, we have not yet failed. What are the Keepers of Aideen? We're a group of druids who have been on this island since the dawn of time. We acted in secrecy much more in the past, but today a lot of people know about our existence, even though our real purpose is a well-kept secret. 
For now, I can't tell you the innermost secret about our real purpose, but I can tell you that our main purpose is to protect Jorvik from Garnik, the Dark Force, so it won't grow stronger and take over the world. There was a lot of secret in that paragraph, but that's fine. So we've read all of the questions. Um, I wanted to read through all of them just to kind of give us a little bit of background because I'm sure for a lot of us it's been a while since we've done all the story quests so now we've got like all the background information that we know and we can continue. Okay Cassandra, you know that if you have any more questions you can return here the same way I showed you. See you in, Ve See you in Veodale. Talk to me when we meet there. Go back and wait. We will, con we will contact you again. I mean, I can't read, can I? Go back and wait. We will contact you soon. See you, Cassandra. Thanks for coming here. You're welcome, Fripp. That was fun. Oh, but this music is not very fun. It sounds a bit spooky. All right, so we have to go back and talk to Elizabeth, who's just down the road. Welcome back, Cassandra. That went well, didn't it? I mean, yes. <laughs> now you know now you know more about how things are connected. If you need to, you can return in time and space to this meeting if you have further queries. You can always use the spiral path to get to the secret stone circle, but this is all a secret, yes? Remember, I pinky promised you, Elizabeth. Good, Cassandra. Your adventure will go on. Your adventure will soon go on, and I'll also try to teach you how to use your powers so you too can be a soul rider. Good luck, we will contact you again soon. Or something, I don't remember if I read that right, but it's fine. So we currently have no main quests available. Complete side quests to level up and unlock more main quests. Okay. All right, some time to plan out a plan of action. Is there any quests around here? We'll just look at the map. Yeah, let's go talk to Miss Holdsworth. I guess Miss Holdsworth has something to tell us. I think it's Miss Holdsworth, I'm not quite sure, but that seems like a good place to go start. Oh, Cassandra, my dear child, how nice to see you. I have a huge problem here in my garden. I can no longer sit and drink my lemonade in peace because I have been invaded by bees. Can you help me get rid of them? I can try my best, Miss Holdsworth. Are you afraid of bees, Cassandra? I think, uh, I think they are just as frightened of you as, they, as you are of them. I can't read. I was going so well. I don't want to hurt the little creatures, only move them away from here so I can continue my quiet life among the cherry trees. I have a wonderful idea for how to solve this, but I need your strong young arms to do it. Can you help me build a beehive? It means they won't have to leave my garden and I'll also get honey for my tea. I've already prepared the wood for the construction, so maybe you can be a darling and build it for me. Here is a hammer. I don't even have time to say yes. Okay. Where's the wood, Miss Holdsworth? Oh, it's over here. It's tiny. Why is there no animations? I swear there used to be animations. <laughs> what an amazing job, dear child. Let's just hope that the bees want to move in. I guess we will have to give them a day or two to settle. I will leave some sugar there to attract them. Dear Cassand- Okay, must be a day later. One day later. <laughs> Dear Cassandra, it worked. They are buzzing up a storm over there and my garden is bee free. But I'm a bit worried that they will move back to their old nest, so I think we'd better destroy it. Since you're on your horse, could you please check there are no bees left in the old nest? That would be so sad. I mean, I wasn't on my horse, but now I'm on my horse, I guess. Which tree is the bees nest in? Oh, it's right up here. Inspecting from my short pony. <laughs> So the coast is clear? That's a good thing. I have to go down to the cellar and get my old softball bat. I was really good at softball when I was young. No strikeout, sister. Ha ha. I don't know what that means, but okay. Um, how does she have a cellar when her house is on stilts? Oh wait, I guess the back of it's not? Wait, I have to see this for like continuity. Yeah, I guess there could be a cellar under here. She just has a um veranda, so... Yeah, okay, don't mind me, Miss Holdsworth. I just doubted your cellar for a second. Look here, you may think it's an old-fashioned bat. Wait, I can't read. <laughs> Look here, you may think it's old-fashioned, but when I was young, this softball bat was first class. Nowadays, everything is made of plastic or aluminum. Al aluminum? Aluminum? Who am I? Oh my gosh, aluminum. 
Aluminum? It's aluminium. I'm just confused, who am I? Nowadays, everything is made of plastic or aluminium. All jokes aside, should we take down the old beehive before some little bee wants to move back in again? Let's do it. Oh, we get the bee shirt. This is how I get the bee shirt. Wow, you have a really, <laughs> wow, you have really strong arms. Cassandra, maybe you should play softball. I'm sure that the bees will make good honey and when it's ready, you're welcome back for some honey cookies and lemonade. Until then, a nice shirt for a good friend. Thank you so much, Miss Holdsworth. So that was quite a short quest, but we do have another quest over here by, I want to say that it's Conrad. So we're going to go speak to Conrad. I think maybe this is when we make our own horseshoes that are like the really good horseshoes. Yes, I was right. It's with Conrad. Hello, Cassandra. The die is ready. The tailor will be happy with this. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's right. That's what we were doing. So a few parts ago, we started to make our very own vest with the tailor. And I guess we're continuing that quest now. Oh, my gosh. Um, I feel like I'm all over the place, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, if you guys have been keeping up with the episodes, then maybe you guys can remember with me. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. I'm definitely going in the wrong direction. All right, I'm here with, was it Donald or, or Donald? Did I do that last time? I don't know, it's Daxton. Thank you, Cassandra, such a beautiful blue color. This will work just fine. Now I need red dye for your waistcoat. I've heard that the farmer Barney has grown some extra large and fine beetroots. Squeezed beetroot should be perfect as red dye. Write to him and ask if he has some beetroots to spare. Okay. I shall do that. I shall do that. Barney, Barney, Barney. Where be Barney? Whenever I come online, I have to check the time of the server. Okay, so yeah, it's 6.30. So that's why there's not too many people online. Oh. <gasps> There is a human. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Extra large. Um, extra large beetroots. I don't know what I'm saying. Beetroots. Of course I have some. The reddest ones in all of Jorvik. I can help you, but I want something in return. Oh, Barney. What happened to, you know, sharing is caring or something? My tractor ran out of diesel in the middle of the road. My diesel tanks my diesel tank here is almost empty. I forgot to refill my own tank. When this happens, I usually borrow some diesel from Steve. He owes me some, so it shouldn't be a problem. Take this can and ride over to the tank next to C's farm and fill it up. After that, you can fill up my tractor. It's parked out on the road. Come back to me when you are done. Do I get to drive the tractor though? Because like, kind of want to drive a tractor, not going to lie. Oh my god, wait. I was just looking around for it and I can't see like the big bulldozer thing but i just i can hear it but i can't see it i'm confused okay do you think i can make the jump i can't make the jump oh i can just fill it up from across the fence fine by me oh maybe it's the car making the honky noise honestly i got no clue here's the little tractor it's kind of cute you know it's a cute little tractor i don't think we get to drive it though i'm gonna be honest Thank you so much, Cassandra. <coughs> Choking on my words. Now I'll pick the finest, juiciest beetroots for your red dye. Come back tomorrow and I'll be done. Oh, and apparently it's the next day. Sometimes I'm really confused whether Star Stable, like, it's a glitch with the with this quest. Whether it's, like, not meant to be the next day already. But it's the next day. Hi, Cassandra. I got the beetroots. They have the most wonderful red color imaginable. I have pressed them for you so the dye is ready. I'm sure the tailor will be pleased. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barney, for your service. Thank you, Cassandra. Such a beautiful red color. Better than I had hoped for. There's no doubt that Barney must grow some high quality beetroot. Now I need some green dye for your waistcoat. Old Miss Holdsworth in Moorland comes here sometimes and she can make it from bushes growing there in Moorland. She has a special way of mixing dye by boiling the leaves in water with olive oil. Ask her how it's done, but don't forget to get some olive oil from Harold too. So we have to speak to Harold? I'm confused. Okay, what's the other thing? 
secret ingredient. Okay, Miss Holdsworth, who makes green dye, has a secret ingredient to get a really rich green color. But everyone knows the secret ingredient is olive oil, so you should get some from Harold. He's standing by the fountain in the middle of the village. Take the oil to Miss Holdsworth. That's such an odd way that they made uh, two quests for the one green dye. That's very interesting. Of course I have olive oil for Miss Holdsworth. Here you are, Cassandra. This is a bottle of our finest olive oil. Take it to Miss Holdsworth, but be careful not to drop it. The bottle is oily and slippery. Thank you so much, Harold. All right, let's head to Miss Holdsworth, who is back here. All the way back to Moorland. See Miss Holdsworth twice in one day. She must love us. Oh, gosh. Gotta focus on driving and not talking. Hello, Cassandra. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been like five minutes. Green dye, you say? Of course. The bushes here in Moorland have large, fine leaves that I can boil for the green dye. But I use a secret ingredient, olive oil. Yes, I know, Miss Holdsworth. I have your olive oil. Thank you so much, Cassandra. This will be perfect to make the green dye. The bushes usually have one leaf which is greener and finer than all the rest. Find and pick that leaf. Pick a dozen such leaves from the bushes around here. When you've brought them to me, I can start making the green dye. Just as nice as, a, as the color the keepers of Aideen use for their clothes. Thank you so much. Okay, I probably don't have to dismount my horse. That was probably a bad idea. Yeah, I'm going to get back onto Vega. <laughs> There we go, we have picked 12, gr 12 leaves of the finest green or something like that. Thank you so much, Cassandra. I'll start making the dye now. It will be ready tomorrow, come back then. Okay, so for Miss Holdsworth, we do have to wait a day. And we have come back to, um, back to Moorland where we started. But apparently there's another quest here inside of the stables. Stolen money. Oh, that's right. We're cleaning up all of the quests today. We were helping Tan with her lost money. Do you think someone took my money? Who would do such a thing? I'll have to check if anyone has seen anything suspicious. Cassandra, you've already helped me a lot, but I would be really grateful if you could help me find out who the thief is. Maybe you can ask if Barney by the silo has seen anything. Barney has a lot of what happens around here and has many contacts. Not that you'd expect from him, but it's true. Oh, not what you'd expect from him, but it's true. Yeah, I'm talking about the bunny who hangs out at the silo east of Steve's farm. So the guy that we just came by. Okay, we're meeting like everyone today, which is like twice in one day, which, you know, maybe it's kind of creepy for them, but we're just like, we're grinding. We're getting the cogs turning, doing, doing our quests, getting levels. All right, we're back at Barney. Hello there, what are you talking about? That's very unfortunate. Well, I haven't seen any thieves. No, we don't have any thieves here that I know of, but talk to Will. He has a good view from his mill on the hill. All right, so we're going to all of the Barney Marnie, oh, Will's not a Barney Marnie, whatever the other person's brother. Never mind, I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see the sacks there. I was so focused on the car. Have I seen anything strange? A thief? No, no thieves in sight. Only a beautiful landscape. I can see a lot from the top of my hill, but I can't see all the way to Veildale. My advice is to ride to Veildale and check if anyone there has heard anything strange. Talk to Sophie in Veildale. I feel like I'm going on a wild goose chase, you guys. They're sending me everywhere except where the money's gonna be. Ooh, bee balm. Oh my god, I just checked uh, global and they're all like, good morning, good morning, hi, good morning. And I'm like, um, it's like 9.30 at night. It's um, actually, no, it's even, it's almost 10 o'clock at night. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> also, you guys mustn't like America servers, at least this one. Oh yeah, I don't think the American servers have the new chat system yet. So you still send hashtags, whereas we get a message before we send our mess our te texty chatty thing on Australian servers. So it kind of means that you don't get chat banned, which is pretty fun. Hi, my friend. Nice to see you. What? A thief? No, I haven't noticed anything unusual. Poor Tan losing her money. I wish I could help you, but I haven't seen any clues that could lead to Tan's lost money. 
You should try asking Sonia. She's always exploring the local trails with her horse Casper and would know about any suspicious going on in these parts. I'd suggest looking for her near the old abandoned home just south of here. Yeah, we're literally going on a wild goose chase. Like, did Tan even bring her money over here? I don't, I don't know. I feel, I just I feel like we're not getting anywhere. Also, my leg is like actually going to sleep. Oh my god, I can't feel my leg. I'm like doing worse at Ferris Quest on this account than I am on my main account and that's saying something. Actually, it's not really since I only, I only have time to go on this account when I'm filming back to the beginning. And it kind of sucks sometimes because like I wish I could play more but at the same time, I just don't have time. I don't have time. It's pretty fun to be able to know that I have like my American account to go on to like do quests though like that's pretty fun to do okay Sonia get here <laughs> Cassandra nice seeing you again lost money you say I haven't seen anything strange but I found some coins on the ground over there where did I find the coins below the bird's nest over there a stone's throw north of us close to a rune stone oh my gosh the birds have been stealing the money the birds have been stealing the money oh my gosh Oh, the birds have made such a, tw a tweedy no noise. I meant to say pretty. <laughs> uh, you decide to talk to Sonia and tell her what you have discovered. Discovered what? That there's a bird here named Birdie? I don't know. Wait. Birdhouse has like a wall here, which we can see. But when you go over here, the wall isn't there. Like you can see through the hole to the other side. Anyway. That's just a little something that I noticed. Back to Sonia. You're just over here. You're just over here, mate. You must be kidding. You're saying that the birds have lined their desks with Tan's money. Is it true? The birds must like shiny things. You have to ride over to Tan and tell her. Here, take these coins. They must belong to her. See you, Cassandra. Say hello to Tan from me. Now, thankfully, I can just call for pickup for this. We don't have to ride all the way back to Moorland. Because um, sometimes I am lazy, you guys. And sometimes I don't ride places. Especially when I'm on a level 10 account with a level 1 horse. Like, we are slow. We're very slow. I can't believe my ears. I thought that a nasty thief had done this. But we can't take the coins away from the birds. That would be mean. The birds obviously don't know that they shouldn't take my money. They didn't do it on purpose because birds don't know the value of money. I have an idea. We can replace the money with something else that shines. Maybe Miss Holdsworth has something we can use. Oh, we're going to Miss Holdsworth for the third time this video. Why am I finding this so amusing? Like, Miss Holdsworth is just like the grandma of the entire of Jorvik. Like, she's just like, you need something? I can come up with an idea. What a lovely story. Of course I'll help you. Let me look through my things. Take this necklace with glass beads. I think the bird will like will like it much better good luck with the trade cassandra thank you uh, now i do have to ride all the way to Vaildale. all right we've brought the shiny glass necklace to the bird let's see what he thinks lots of tweeting uh trade the necklace for the money and ride back to tan with the money oh we get tan's boots these are like some of my favorite boots in their game i'm not even kidding like i don't know why i love them so much but for some reason i just think that they're really pretty like i don't know they're not they're not like pretty but they just like because i think they're kind of dirty so it's like um i don't know it's fun for role plays to use them and stuff i don't know if i'm making sense it's too late at night for this Cassandra, you're a hero. Just imagine the birds decorating their nest with my coins. I'll never forget this. Thanks a million. Oops. No, I do not want to do no training today. Yes, these are the pants. They're like kind of... Hang on. Let me show you. Let me show you. They're like kind of dirty here on the on this boot thing. I don't know. They're just fun for role plays. But I think that's going to be the end of this video, you guys. Where's the sun? Where do I... Where's good lighting? You know, lighting matters in Star Stable. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying back to the beginning still i know that i am can you stop eating the concrete please thank you i think it's really fun to still revisit these quests and i know that like 
Back to the Beginning is one of the least viewed videos on my channel, but I think that I'm still making these videos for myself and also because people still want to see Back to the Beginning. There's still those few people out there, so that's why I'm continuing doing it. And I hope you guys are having an awesome day or have had an awesome day and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye!